There's no way this goes that deep. I don't believe it. That goofy ass game I played on stream that one time, bro. No way. I'm really losing myself in this. Like you guys said, the law gets deep. And I never knew it got this deep because I'm starting to lose my sense of reality because this can't be real. Yo, YouTube, it's your boy. Um, let's I'm back again. We got something new though. Listen, I've been meaning to do this for a while. We've got the Five Nights at Freddy's game theory, the ultimate timeline. I've played this game like once on stream, drunk, right? But apparently, there's a whole law behind this, and apparently, it's way better than a game. And I didn't. The game chat was there to me. I'll be real. Yeah, I want to deep dive into this. I, I love my lore type videos as well, bro. I'm always locked into those. So no more talking. Let's jump in. Let's get it. Let's go. Today we end the torment. 19 books, 11 games, 8 whole years. Brother, 19 the books, 11 games? Is it goes complete. that deep? The pieces are in place for us. Now all we have to do is put this story of tragedy, jealousy, and loss back together. Chat, there Hello. is chat, there is no way that goofy ass game Five Night at Freddy's has tragedy and loss and all these like crazy concepts in it, bro. There's just no way, bro. There's no way this goes that deep. I don't believe it. That goofy ass game I played on stream that one time, bro. No way. Hello, Internet. Welcome to Game Theory, the show that feels like a kid revealing the class project that he's been working on all year. Except here, it's the class project that I've been working on for the past decade of my life. By the way, is it me? Or is it like the quality a little bit? You know what I'm saying? Okay, it's not me, but. This one is big, my friends, and I gotta admit, kind of nervous. I haven't attempted a timeline video on this franchise since 2018, back in the days when Mike was the crying child. 2018, back, man. Actually, a surprise. And Fazgoo was a phrase I'd ever thought I'd have to utter. But since the last time I did something like this, we've had three more massive games, the death and revival of the FNAF movie, and more robot kids than you can shake a staff bot at. It is uh, exhausting robot to keep kids? track of this whole franchise, which honestly is why I'm here today. The lore at this point is complicated it is full of speculation and theory so to hopefully make it a little easier for everyone and to give us all a baseline to talk about this franchise moving forward into the future it's time to reveal my current working fnaf timeline but just before i do i just want to explain a couple of things first this timeline is massive seriously it is huge this thing towers <laughs> over any video project we have ever done on bro the channel. is is bigger than pokemon you've covered pokemon on your channel i'm assuming because you're showing it the law is bigger than Pokemon. How many games has po Pokemon has so many games? Bro. But when you look what at am I getting myself into, chat? The story of FNAF really boils down to the story of one man, William Afton. His successes, his failures, his rise to becoming co-owner of one of the most successful restaurant franchises in the world, and his eventual fall to the monsters he helped to create, only to then be reborn in a new digital form later. So sit back, grab some popcorn, or your pitchforks if you're okay. the type to get upset when I say something controversial, and make sure that you subscribe, since this is going to be a video that you're going to have to New York in October. order to fully dissect. Damn, bro. Without any more waiting, I can't believe they're still going. The 20 years plus, man. Obsessive father who slowly descended into madness and along the way discovered the secret to eternal life. Bro, what? Our story begins I did not, not gather that from the game at all. Even in the 1970s, then I, I was drunk. All the way back in the 1930s. It was the throes of the Great Depression, and people were in desperate need of cheap entertainment, especially in Utah, one of the states hit hardest, fourth highest unemployment in the nation, and full of transients. People looking for work in Salt Lake, finding none, and ultimately moving on to find their fortunes <clears throat> out in California. People were tired, and they were hungry. But as they traveled, there was one thing that could lift their spirits. A simple roadside attraction called Fred Bear 
Bear's Singing Show. The ads were plastered all okay. over the town, featuring an animated bear drawn in the popular pie-eyed cartoon style for characters at the time. He resembled cartoons like Mickey Mouse, Felix the Cat, Betty Boop. It immediately said that this, Fred Bear's, was a place where you could bring the family. And the price? Honestly, couldn't be beat. For 50 cents, you could get food and entertainment as you watched the Damn. local real-life dancing Ch bears. Only for 50 stage. cents, bro. You got to see dancing bears at large and life back then was good, like huh? Bailey, where the tickets would go for about a dollar. That's a dollar without food. But this was a smaller show, like the type from the Vaughn Brothers or the Robbins Brothers, where tickets would sell for just a mere 50 cents. Watching that bear do tricks on stage brought a glimmer of joy at a time when so much was wrong with the world. The simple show would go on for years, bringing happiness to hundreds of travelers passing through looking for a quick meal. But it left a permanent impression on one little boy, capturing his imagination in a way that nothing else had. One little boy named Billy. That was his nickname at least, but his parents liked to call him William. William Afton. The bear could dance. It could sing. For decades, William dreamed of recreating uh, a, a bear singing. Bear life, but how? There's no fun, way. I'm doubt. gonna see that show. Mind for business, but he wasn't the most creative. How do you make a singing, <laughs> dancing bear come to life? The best he could do was using rudimentary costumes. We know, based on the retro poster that was hidden in Security Breach, that at least at one point, Fred Bear was an actual bear. Dancing bear shows were a real form of entertainment. What? The only problem is that timing-wise, none of our main characters would be the people in charge of that business in the 30s and a series of pizza restaurants in the 80s without him just being extremely old. Best case scenario, if Afton's running the singing show when he's 18, that still puts him at nearly 70 when the first pizzeria opens and his murder Damn. story begins. That just doesn't make a lot of logical sense because he doesn't become immortal until his first death in Springtrap. That's why I suspect that Fred Bear's singing show was either a family Wait, 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 wait. Carried on wait, to wait. <laughs> Wait, Billy becomes a murderer chat? Little Billy. Little innocent Billy who likes dancing and singing bears. Becomes a murderer chat. Chat, I like, I, when I was small, I liked dancing and singing bears. Who remembers that one show? The, the big bear in that big blue house. Is it, what was it called again? I love that show. I ain't become a murderer. Billy, what happened, Billy, bro? Billy, what happened? It's always, it's always a Billy, bro. It really is. It's always a flipping Billy. Spoiling it for the rest generation, of us. Or something that he saw as a kid and just wanted to recreate when he grew up. William was inspired by the work of Walt Disney, who throughout the 50s and 60s was pioneering the use of mascot suits throughout his theme park. The big innovation, suits with five fingers. This allowed the performers wearing the suits to use their natural arms and hands to interact with the guests. <laughs> as opposed to Wait, was that like a crazy innovation? <laughs> like your costume to have five fingers wow this is crazy we got a copyright this we got a pattern this one wait what <laughs> why was that just not normal uh, maybe i'm being ignorant and i just don't know but I would have thought that would have been models where the arms would just hang limply by their sides. Oh, see, okay. With a simple mascot suit, he would I mean, be able to realize his childhood dream. He would be able to bring Fred Bear to life. To appeal to the kids, and for copyright reasons, he changed Fred Bear from a realistic brown animal to a cartoonish yellow bear with a purple hat and bow tie. But feeling like one character wasn't enough, he added another friend, a yellow rabbit with a purple vest and matching tie named okay, Bonnie wait. the Bunny. Well, Fred Bear was certainly his first love, Bonnie was extra special because that was his it was an original character that he had created from scratch and i do mean okay so i feel like i feel like we're getting an origin story here with seams and stitches for the for the for the, for the, for the mascot you can see the seams and everything it even has Ugh. five fingers for the performer's hands it is very much not a spring trap suit this is something much more rudimentary it came out it looks so scary were a part of the story that's why i suspect that it was actually the first predating literally everything it's also a suit that is very personal to afton he put his digital consciousness in that form it's his personal avatar it's the way that he sees himself there's also a whole separate discussion to be had here about the habits and rituals of serial killers so the fact that he's choosing to lure kids and kill them in this particular suit actually says a lot about his emotional attachment to it bro i feel like there's a video before this we should have watched because why is bro really becoming a serial killer i never knew that and he's just talking about it like it was normal or like it's normal bro wait so he billy dressed up as this bunny and lure kids into his show to kill them see now i feel like if i had 
even that piece of information before I play the game, then I'd feel a lot more, do you know what I mean? A bit more immersed into it. I didn't get all of that. So the game wasn't really that scary for me, you know? Like it was, if I had that piece of information, so while Fredbear seems to have started as someone else's creation, Golden Bonnie was uniquely Williams, giving him a personal connection. And that's not all. In this whole franchise, only one set of characters have themselves five fingers, the Nightmares. Even Golden Freddy, Fredbear was a five-fingered wearable suit at one point in the story, as we see in this shot from the graphic novel, before he, like everyone else, was turned into an animatronic. This seems to imply that all of the main characters had similar wearable mascot outfits at least at one point in time, and that whoever is having the FNAF 4 Nightmares, if they even are Nightmares, <clears throat> saw those mascot suits specifically. Bonnie and Fredbear would perform on stage to small but enthusiastic crowds. Finally, he was able to deliver fantasy and fun to all the kids, delighting and inspiring them in the exact way that he had been delighted and inspired so many years ago. Afton, despite eventually falling to become the heartless serial killer and mad scientist that we know him as, began as someone with good intentions and a so love what for the kids. He wanted to bring things to life from the very beginning. You know what? I was gonna sound re really Andrew Tate-ish by saying I bet a female is the reason why I even said female. <laughs> I bet a girl was the reason why everything went wrong for him. Like the love of his life left him and now he hates the world type 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 stuff. But I don't wanna sound too Andrew Tate-ish, so we're not gonna we're not gonna go with that theory. But chat chat, I don't know, my shine gun's tweaking a little bit, chat. Hold on. If you've been on my channel, if you if if you're new to my channel, bro, I do have the ability to use my shine gun and to predict certain things that might happen in in things that I'm watching. So I'm just letting you guys know my shine gun is tweaking a little bit. You know what I'm saying? A theme that recurs a lot for him throughout the rest of the franchise. And things could have ended there. That could have been the end to his story. It okay. could have been perfect had it not been for one thing. Other people saw the success of his idea and they wanted in. Enter Chica's Party World, a rival restaurant starring performing... Oh, okay. See? And if you're new to the channel, this is another thing I do. I pause it before they literally get to what I was saying. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, I pause it just before they they proved me wrong like bro if i just didn't pause it then i wouldn't have like whatever animal characters his idea except they did it better william may have been the first but obviously he wasn't the best it hurt the prideful william afton to admit okay. it that this restaurant was able to do the thing that he always wanted to do make the animals actually come to life all of the performers in this restaurant were robots uh, simple metal skeletons that were so jealousy got to bombs, him all of them able to freely hey. turn and talk and dance on That's their a... own no human required it was like magic magic that came i would from do that to a person i ain't gonna lie named henry Emily. jealousy will turn you into an evil person had been able to harness the power of life itself afton admired him he was jealous to be sure but he also looked upon this man with awe off to one side of chica's party world was a small cabaret stage featuring an elephant magician on the other a hippo known to ramble on and on that one was more of a joke for the parents but it was the main stage that was for the kids a rocking band of characters featuring a yellow chicken thing with a southern drawl named chica backed by a band of other country themed characters including a pig with a banjo mm. an upbeat frog from the a mm. sermon hole and a brown bear with a heavy southern accent. Wait, mm. a bear? But bears were his animals. Why not a cow or, uh. or something to fit the country theme a bit better? Why he felt like that was a personal attack. Adding insult to injury, they had to call this thing Ned Bear, a direct copy of his own Fred Bear. Damn. Well, I've suspected that the mediocre melodies played a much more important role in the story than just being a bunch more animatronics to fill out the roster, especially Ned Bear. Bear, which is just so suspiciously close to Fred Bear. And yet, there are two key details that we're going to have to justify with any mediocre melodies mentioned. One, they're very rudimentary with external battery packs, implying that they come very early in the timeline. And two, we know that, at minimum, Mr. Hippo does eventually become an official member of the extended Freddyverse. But if these things are supposed to be cheap About generic... About to debut as M+. <laughs> I don't know why M plus has killed me like that. <laughs> M plus, you know. <laughs> Yo. Bro. <laughs>
implying that they come very early in the timeline. And two, we know that at minimum, Mr. Hippo does eventually become an official member of the extended Freddyverse. But if these things are supposed to be cheap, generic ripoffs, why would you be trying to rip off yourself? You wouldn't. You would be stealing someone else's ideas. Right. So if Afton created Fredbear, there would have to be some rival franchise. The only other person who would likely be ripping him off? Henry. We've talked extensively about how the mediocre melodies are clearly Henry's design aesthetic. So it just has to be him. I don't think Henry's doing this maliciously. He doesn't strike me as the type. He was likely building the robots at the orders of someone else that was running a rival restaurant franchise. But that's enough motivation to start Afton down a path of jealous rivalry, but also begrudging admiration. As the Freddy Files Ultimate Edition says, it's important to revisit the beginning of Henry and William's relationship. So here you go. I think this is where it begins. Also, this is future Matt Pat here coming back to add this one in. Seems like the recently released character encyclopedia has backed up all of this speculation. I've had this timeline written for about a month now, but I've also been holding off a bit to see what wrenches this character encyclopedia might throw into it. And on this- No way. <clears throat> for FNAF guys out there, right? Do we have like new chapters every week? Like it's a, uh, like it's Shonen Jump, bro. Do we got new chapters releasing like every week or something? Like, is this an ongoing like thing? Or is everything done now? Is the FNAF law finished? particular point, I gotta say, it seems like we might actually have nailed it. They actively call out the suspicious similarities to the main Fredbear crew. Quote from one of the pages, Ned Bear looks like an imitation, altered just enough to avoid copyright issues. I don't know about you, but that seems to imply that we were right on the money. Knowing all of this, at one point, the franchises had to have merged. That's really the only way that you get Mr. Hippo from the rival franchise as part of the Fazbear crew. This also mirrors a lot of what happened in the real-life history of Chuck E. Cheese, with two rival restaurants, each with own casts of characters merging uh, one unified brand again we've gone yeah i don't know much about a chuck e cheese law wanted to remind you all of that here but why would i call out the rival restaurant as being named chica's party world few things actually first we know for a fact that a location named chica's party world exists it is mentioned in the source code teasing sister location so it is out there somewhere and doesn't fit cleanly anywhere Sec bro you wait, wait 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 they found that piece of information in like the source code the source code of what? Like, chat, honestly, I don't know for anybody else, I'm finding it hard to distinguish between what's real, like, what's like reality, and what's like fiction, bro. Like, part of me thinks, like, this is really real. But then, obviously, there's another part of me that I think, this is fiction, bro. This is coming from comic books, and you know what I mean? But, like, stuff like this, bro, you're getting information from source code? Like, this shit like makes me feel like it's real bro like why is there hidden information in source code that you have to decipher and like i don't know i'm really getting confused bro like i said i was talking about sharing guns earlier in this video but like bro i feel like i'm in a genjutsu right now honestly what's real and what's like fiction right here source code teasing sister location so it is out there somewhere and so doesn't there's a real chica anywhere. store Second, the story the puppet card there's a real chica's, chica's restaurant explicitly looped in with the book versions of pig patch and ned bear implying that she started as a mediocre melody thirdly her design just fits better with a the theme of down home country animals with southern accents playing the banjo and eating with bibs and with her being the headliner of the show with her name on the restaurant it would make sense then that when the restaurants merged she was the one that was added to the main cast of characters while all the other mediocres faded it away. It's also why when Freddy's closes after William's killing spree, she's the one to branch back off into her old franchise and is therefore killing spree sister location. A detail that's bothered me for years at this point. It might also Oh yeah, chat. I want to I want to let you guys know I'm not going to be able to like that soak in Henry's all this information not his. It's at his all. Jealous bro. admiration turned to hard and bitter. So if I have like the same question the next couple of years as families continue to choose throughout the video world over Fred Bears. You know why? compete with the appeal of the robot Eventually, his restaurant would go bankrupt, only to get bailed out by, of course, Henry Emily. Another insult. Another humiliation that... Wow. He got bailed out by the guy he's, like, super jealous. Oh, hell. Okay. So I'm starting to understand why he maybe went off the rails. Although, like, killing children is never, like, a justification for that. But, like, I'm starting to understand his, like villain origin bro i i'm yeah another insult another humiliation <coughs> that william wouldn't soon forget 1979 despite being bitter after pause
William wouldn't soon forget. 1979. Despite being bitter, Afton couldn't deny that what came next was a period of massive success and expansion. With the two franchises okay. now merged into one, it was the best of both worlds. Afton's oh, wow, okay. ideas with Henry's robotic expertise. The two men decided to launch under a new name, Fred Bear's Family Diner, a pizza chain that would eventually come to feature a mix of humans in performing suits as well as on-stage animatronics. They decided to stick with Fred Bear as the headliner, considering the Yellow Bear was easily identifiable as a brand because he was the original performing oh, animatronic. Oh, appreciated that. This new restaurant would also see a mix of characters as the two franchises merged into one, with Pig Patch and Happy Frog performing right alongside Fred Bear and Bonnie. And as part of this one big Fred Bear family, they even got themselves official merch that were released, ranging from masks to magnets. The crappy Mr. Hippo fridge magnet? <sighs> That said, not all the characters were winners. The reception to some characters was just... Bro, what? Chat, all this performance stuff, all this... All this lore... Da, 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 da. We, we're obviously going to get into it. But... Are we ever going to get into how the food actually tasted, right? Because they're talking about pizzas, restaurants. Like, was the food actually good, bro? Do you know what I mean? Were there any, like, good reviews or bad reviews out there? And if there were bad reviews, did my boy, like... You know what I mean? Get mad as hell and start going on a killing spree on, on food reviewers. <laughs> like, is there like a little offshoot story of that? Chuck E. Cheese food is always mediocre. Okay, so wait, is this like based on Chuck E. Cheese chat? Is this like the whole thing based on Chuck E. Cheese? Like, again, if you don't know by now, I'm British. We don't have Chuck E. Cheese over here. So I don't know the Chuck E. Cheese law. I know the Chuck E. Cheese rat though. I know the meme. I don't know if you guys seen a Chuck E. Cheese meme. I'm going to put it up here. That Chuck E. Cheese meme is the only thing I know about Chuck E. Cheese, bro. Is it Chuck E. Cheese food? Even like, what did they even sell? Chuck E. Cheese? Mediocre. So they faded away into the dumpster, storage units, and retro budget tech stores of lost nostalgia, waiting for their chance to step back into the limelight if and when a headliner went out of commission. Others, though, would fare much better, like a new pirate fox, as well as a blue guitar playing variant of the yellow Bonnie Bunny. Oh, there's the so many like so big, it characters. Was own cartoon show, Fred Bear and Friends. Business was booming. In the end, Fred Bear and Bonnie's popularity would be so strong that they would be able to support the Fred Bear's Family Diner franchise all on their own. Own, while also spinning off a new sister location dedicated to their friends. In 1983, bro, Freddy like, Fazbear's Pizza they're super successful, bro. to all this new supporting cast seems like characters. anyways. Chica the Chicken, Bonnie the Blue Bunny, Foxy the Pirate, and of course the headliner, a brown Freddy Fazbear. Okay, Business. so chat, the Yonkos. We've got the four Yonkos here, bro. For those of you who watch One Piece, you know what I'm talking about. Okay was good and afton was happy mostly it did bother him that the one original character that he created the one that he himself played golden bonnie got passed over for inclusion in that cartoon show the only character in the roster of regulars to get ignored for the show but other than that things were going smoothly he had himself a wife two sons a daughter he had a thriving okay. business and best of all he was able to learn the craft of robotics from the man that he both loved and hated henry Together, so again where does it go wrong what these characters could do because it was quick and easy new characters introduced into the roster would be given a simple hand-sewn suit with five fingers that any performer could wear eventually henry would design one of his signature animatronics for that character utilizing a divided mouth with either a hinged or sliding jaw design this was the first generation of animatronics but why stop there afton had big ideas what if the animatronics weren't just locked to the stage but could freely roam the restaurant and interact with the kids what if his mascot suits could become animatronics what if you could use more than just rigid metallic skeletons uh, is that how it looks like without all the skin give the animatronics fluidity and flexibility while still providing structure the possibilities for this technology were uh -uh, endless. Child, I don't like this. fell in love with robotics he had started with a dream of bringing one simple singing bear to life but with robots he had stumbled across the tools that gave him the ability to control life itself and thanks to henry he was practically speed running his way to an engineering degree and while william wouldn't admit it out loud one other thing that kept pushing him forward was the desire to beat his former rival to prove himself smart hey that dude be helping bro that motivation right there considered to be having a like, a like a rivalry genius. but pride cometh before the fall and tragedy <clears throat> was about to strike 
Where's our sound? Business was booming with two whole restaurant franchises running. Fred Bear's Family Diner and the newly opened Freddy Fazbear's Pizza. Together, William and Henry had been able to take the hybrid suit idea and make it into a reality. They called their new invention the Springlock Suit. And fittingly enough, it was symbolic of the partnership between these two men. A human suit as designed by William that could become a freestanding Henry-style robot. But because it was still new tech with oh, kinks to oh, work out, oh, the sorry, robot sorry, sorry, sorry. restricted... Um... Why does this because got not one YouTuber chat? I don't remember what his name is. Is it Markiplier? Monkey Plier? Henry style robot. But because it was still new tech with kinks to work out, the rollout was limited, restricted only to the Fred Bear's family diner location. All of this meant that William was busier than ever. He didn't have time to be a full time parent, so he designed a nanny cam system where cameras and speakers were hidden throughout the neighborhood, as well as in his youngest son's favorite toy, psychic friend Fred Bear. I mean, plushy Fred Bear. But since cameras just weren't enough to raise a kid, he also left childcare duties to his eldest son, Michael. Wait, 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 so he put cameras all over his house because he just wasn't at home? Is that one gathering? Again, this is like, this is a lot of information to take in, chat. Like, I'm getting information here and there. Did he put cameras around his house and that's where he got the idea? Put cameras around the restaurant? Because again, chat, for those of you who don't know, I've played the game, so I know a little bit. Try not to be a deadbeat. I mean, at least he's doing better than Naruto, right? Uh, do you know what I mean? <laughs> Had to get that one in. So he designed a nanny cam system where cameras and speakers were hidden throughout the neighborhood, as well as in his oh, youngest son's throughout the neighborhood. Boys, okay. Friend Fred Bear. I mean, plushy Fred Bear. But since cameras just weren't enough to raise a kid, he also left childcare duties to his eldest son, Michael. There was just one problem with that. Michael was far from the best babysitter. He tormented his younger brother by jump scaring him with a foxy mask and he left him behind. William watched what a little all of shit. His cameras. Kids would be kids. Tomorrow was another day, after all. Except Michael's torment didn't stop bitter angry thoughts would run through michael's mind Why oh he hell no take care of this whining cry baby all the time it just wasn't fair it was i mean he's not wrong he's not wrong bro he's taking all that was like he should really be living his life bro like chat bro you only get to live through childhood once dude and his childhood is getting taken up by having to look after like your younger brother like i can understand the resentment you have towards your younger brother bro and it's not no one's fault apart from your serial killer daddy billy do you know what i mean but still, being a little shit is not. By playing the ultimate prank, a prank that though. just so happened to be on this crying child's birthday. <laughs> he and his friends would take his scared little brother and make him do the one thing that he was terrified of doing: getting close to the animatronics. That would be embarrassing for the kid that was such a. Ah, uh, wait. His squirmed, okay, I'm starting to see some of the game references. Just as they were putting that small squirming boy up to Fred Bear's Damn. lips. The mouth snapped shut. The sensitive spring locks inside the body had been triggered by the boy's movements, and they'd immediately clamped down oh my god oh my god <laughs> chat okay i know they talked about serial killing and everything but i feel like this is a turning point in the story bro it got it just got dark it just got real i can i can't even imagine that that is nuts, bro. It was in Attack on Titan, and I can't remember the moment. But there was one point in Attack on Titan where a Titan chewed down on someone's head, bro. I can't remember who it was. But I'm just imagining that. Hearing this, when I'm hearing this. That's crazy, bro. Where it's not just chewing down, it snapped. Like, it was a quick motion. Like, it was like... Bro. Like, that's crazy. I'm curious to see what happens now. You've got me in. You've locked me in now. What happens? The wriggling stopped. The boy went limp, but it was just a prank. It was meant to be funny. The boy was taken to the hospital and was immediately given an IV. Flowers. Oh, I thought he died. Oh. I mean, I don't mean it in that way. Like, I did, obviously didn't want him to die or anything. Um, as I was saying, bro, I don't mean to sound like like a piece of shit, but I really thought he died right there. Like, I thought like, do you know what I mean? Like, oh, why were you not dead after that? And if you're not dead, there's has to be a couple screws loose, bro. 
There's no way. Bro, veggie. He has to turn veggie, bro. Like that head is that that brain is vegan now, bro. next to his hospital bed, but the damage was too severe. He got a vegan up, brain. As the younger brother's consciousness began to fade, he could hear Michael's last words, a small and flimsy apology. But his father Williams, through the voice of the Fredbear plush, were a firm and committed promise to a dying son. You're broken. I will put you back together. This would not be the end. No matter what, William's son Ooh. would again. It would just I don't have time. a son of that. Right now, he just didn't have. His young son's heart flatlined as the boy faded into the inky unknown Damn. The, aftermath of the tragedy changes started happening around the restaurants kids were now required to wear security wristbands to prevent anyone from getting outside without parental permission any kid who approached the exit without permission would have to answer to the security puppet a marionette on strings that could fly around on rails across the restaurant to stop kids in their tracks it was Bro, that's actually scary as hell Michael constantly leaving the restaurant without his brother in the wake of fred bear's spring lock failure all the hybrid suits were getting retired locked away at the nearby freddy fazbear location it was yet another tough pill to swallow after all the hard work that he and Henry had put into them. William would eventually bury the boy's small body in a remote location out in the woods right alongside his drive into and out of work every day. The death of this little boy sent the family spiraling. His wife, crippled with grief, was so distraught that all she could do was sit and watch TV. But his son, Michael, was far worse. That's what I do now. Of seeing hallucinations of a golden bear standing outside of his window. The boy was so racked with guilt that he was convinced that he was being haunted by the ghost of his brother stuck in the I mean, as you should, you piece of shit. Like, I get it, bro. But look at your Lego head head. Look at, look at your Lego head, bro. You deserve that shit. Like, you just like you should feel guilty as fuck. Like, why are you being a little piece of shit to your little bro? Like, that's your little bro, dog. Sorry, it's too late that took his life the suit's three toed feet digging into the wet earth the words it's me ringing through michael's ears some nights michael would even go so far as to break out of his room to check the gravesite and ensure that his brother was still there Damn. as for william himself he disappeared into his work and his drinks juniors the local bar wasn't far from his son's gravesite he found himself going there more and more frequently spending longer and longer amounts of time there the bar gave him a place to think to remember to reflect and stew on how henry had stolen his idea for an animal theme <laughs> no what you should be doing is stewing and reflecting on the fact that you was never home and that was the reason why this happened but he's too busy like being jealous about this nigga right here from what i've seen or what i've seen from this video he's the nicest guy ever bro He's the reason why you're so successful right now. They'd cut his character out of the cartoon when everyone else was there. How Henry had humiliated him by buying him out of bankruptcy. And now, now there was his son. Henry had taken his son from him. The robotic part was the part that failed after all. William ordered one more drink, but it was one too many. The bar turned him out <laughs> and told him to go home. Get out. But William didn't go home. Drunk and angry, William raced back to the Get restaurant to give Henry poop. a piece of his mind. Only to find someone else waiting. Henry's daughter. Charlie locked outside of the building. Oh, damn, she has a, he has a door? Window. Fine, some other problem to fix. But then Afton got an idea. A beautifully awful idea. This. This was his chance to get back at the man that had humiliated him all those years ago. Henry had killed his business, and now Henry's robotic suit had killed his son. It was time for William to do some killing of his own. Let Henry feel what it's like to have something you love get ripped away. While parties continued inside the walls of the pizzeria, William attacked Charlie in the back back alley it felt good he felt free what wait 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 is 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 charlie henry's door or his door here's why i'm getting a little bit confused here because the way they're speaking about it is charlie's gotta be henry okay henry's door okay cool okay yeah uh billy you're living up to your name right now bro stop being a billy dude you're being an absolute menace. Resentment and bitterness trapped in his heart finally released in a moment of pure unapologetic evil. He would make Henry hurt like he hurts. <laughs> And in that moment, William became a killer. He dropped Charlie's lifeless body and drove home, forced to confront his family problems later that night, appalled, but also a little excited by what he had just done. Charlie's death would remain on the books as a random act of violence. And though Henry had suspicions about William, there was no physical evidence, nothing that could link him back to the crime. In the weeks that followed, Fred Bear's family diner would close for good. Two high-profile deaths around the restaurant with two... Yeah, I mean, that makes sense. That is not good PR. Besides, Freddy Fazbear's was still 
still open, and it was the newer restaurant anyway. All the equipment from the diner, including the old yellow suits and security puppet, would get retired to that location, and there they would sit for two uneventful years. The rest of 1983 and 1984 were spent quietly grieving. Freddy Fazbear's Pizza and the new cast of characters were a hit. Tragic memories of their yellow predecessors quickly faded. Afton kept a low profile and buried himself in work and research, quickly reaching Henry's level of engineering and even surpassing him. And while Henry slowed down to grieve, Afton kept Bro, going, he literally sped run becoming an evil scientist, bro. <laughs> He sped one now. Company. Afton Robotics for all those pet projects that were a little bit too experimental for the regular operations of the pizzeria. The first of these experimental projects was a secret workshop under his house. A veritable bunker, which allowed him to work while still monitoring his kids via hidden security cameras. Oh, one, chat, nine, is that... Eight, three. A passcode that served as a constant... Chat, is that where you're at in the game? Yeah, this feels like the game right here, man. At least the first one. The first one is the only game I've played of why the cameras were so important, why he was down there in the first place. This was all to fulfill the promise that he had made to his son, right? I will put you back together. This was for him, all for him, right? But cameras weren't enough. He needed to solve the runaway Michael problem. He had to keep him in the house. He couldn't have another one of his kids wind up dead inside of an animatronic suit. So why not run a little experiment on Michael? You see, all this work with Henry had gotten Afton to start learning more about life, robots, the human mind, and what a <clears throat> fallible machine we as humans were. Our reality is so easy to manipulate with a few sensory deceptions. Deceptions like sound. With just a few sounds, he had discovered that he could alter a person's vision. He could transform blank, smooth, plastic robots into lumbering, twisted nightmares. Yeah. Nightmares far scarier than he could create with actual materials. They would appear organic, rotting, putrid, terrifying. These would be his means of keeping his son Michael in the house where he belonged. Was it extreme? Maybe. But then again, this was the boy who had killed his son. He would make him sorry. And so Michael would grow up not only dealing with the memories of his own guilt, the hospital room, the pills, the flowers, the death of his brother, but also facing literal nightmares, illusions created by sound. That's Michael crazy. Would never these either. Years later, as a security guard, he would still draw pictures of them inside of his logbook. But all of these extra projects. Oh, so, okay. So I'm starting to gather some pieces of information. So, chat, are we Michael, bro, in the first, in, in, in the first game? Again, that's the only game I've played. Are we Michael, dude? I'm, I'm keeping up with you guys now. Suffered even more. He was an absent father and a non-existent husband, leaving his wife cold and alone. Why do you hide inside your walls when there is music in my halls? All I see is an empty room. No more joy, an empty tune. And despite her repeated demands that he and shut up bitch and make me a pizza that's what i'll be screaming fuck it child. you know what i mean make me a pizza give me a double margarita with some pepperonis on top and be snappy Eva's office and engage with the family, he refused time and time again, leaving her no choice but to leave. You burned down my house? You call that a house? It was like a morgue in there. You need to see your son. The baby isn't mine. Well, how's this? I'm keeping the diamond ring. And through it all, there was one lingering <laughs> feeling. William wasn't done. He had gotten a taste of what it felt like to be unleashed. What it felt like to be free. Charlie's murder had unlocked something in him. And he wanted more. June 26th, 1985. Putting on the golden Bonnie suit, he lured children one by one to the back room of the pizzeria when no one was looking. Oh, first, my. He would lure them with promises of cake and cookies. He told Okay, them yeah, you would have got me. <laughs> you would have got me. You would get me still to this day. Actually, in fact, in knowing all the context that I know, you're offering me like a whole piece of cake and some cookies on the side. Yes, sir. I'm never turning that down. I'm going in there knowing how dangerous you are right now, bro. I'm going to take the chance. I'm going to take my chance. Chubby, yes. Yeah, sir. How do you think I got this chubby, bro? Yeah, I don't miss, I don't miss out on no opportunity. Free food? He would ask for help with homework. Susie was the first. You never truly forget. Damn, look at the quickness he snatched up. Especially with the quickness. 
but where to hide the bodies? He couldn't sneak out. Someone would see him. He had to hide them in a place where they'd never be found and where <clears throat> they'd never leave the building. They had to be stuffed, what? stuffed inside of the suits. No one would nah. Those suits anyway except for them. Nah, so that's crazy, Chuck. Into Chica. Fritz, Jeremy, and Gabriel. Oh my them God. Them. It, was it was too easy. And with each little life he snuffed out, his lies got bigger. Their house was burning. They're just being kidnapped like, until the last one. No, 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 because that, that don't work because the bodies are going to decompose. So, and they're going to start stinking. How do you stop it from smelling? Otherwise, people are going to notice. Tense was off. He let himself get violent. Too violent. I'll just wait for him after school. Throw a bag over his head. Hit him with a shovel. And drag him into the back of my car. The body of Cassidy was far more bloody and broken than any of the others. He'd let himself go too far. That one? That one he shouldn't have killed. With no more active animatronics left, he shoved the body into the one suit that remained backstage. The long-forgotten yellow Fredbear. Now broken and discolored with age. Broken. Like Cassidy was broken. Like his son was broken. Newspapers were reported on this disappearance, naming the whole thing the missing children's incident. Police would even charge William with the crimes after finding security footage of the golden mascot suit luring kids to the back. Chuck, William is Billy, right? Billy is William. Is his name Billy William or William Billy? Or, is, or are these two different people? I'm getting a little bit confused there. Need some clarification. Billy was childhood nickname. Oh, okay, cool. So William is his real name, but Billy was his childhood. Okay. I'm gonna call him Billy though. But they couldn't convict him. They had no bodies, and his face had been <clears> hidden <throat> behind the mascot suit the entire time. What they had was circumstantial at best. And so he Bro. walked away a free man. But no, how are you not stepping into the restaurant and smelling the decomposed bodies, bro? Like, what are we talking about? Henry knew the truth. In these murders, he saw his daughter Charlie all over again. So he threw Afton out of the company and shuttered the doors to the old pizzeria. Henry would keep the franchise quiet for two years. This would not happen again. This could not happen again. How could he protect the kids? Finally, he developed a solution. He would implement an even more extreme security system in the form of new animatronics, toy animatronics, inspired by the toys that they had been selling years ago. But these guys, these were special. They were a new breed of robot with facial recognition recognition abilities but most importantly they're all tied into some kind of criminal database so they can facial recognition in 1983 uh what this guy's a genius. All the original animatronics now withered with age were moved to the new location. With a plan in place, it was time to try once more. The year was 1987 and the new and improved... Even if, even if it was still 1987 facial recognition, this guy's a genius. Bear's Pizza was making headlines in local newspapers. Headlines that just so happened to catch the attention of William Afton. Freddy's was back? And without him? That was his idea. His character. Henry was, yet again, trying to cut him out of the picture. No. As long as these restaurants stayed open, William would always come back. Then he noticed the phone number to apply at the bottom of the article. Hundred dollars a week to apply call. Afton would go back. Not as an owner or co-founder. He would go back in the one place that they would least suspect suspect him a lowly day shift security guard and there it was buried in the back of parts and services mixed in with the old withered animatronics was the golden rabbit with the yellow security badge still on his chest he used his crank to pull open the spring locks it was time for bonnie to give an encore i'm assuming this is like the second game because i know there's a couple games right this gonna be like the second iteration of the game or something and also why is he going through all this trouble you hate this man so much. You're already a seasoned killer. Just kill the man and get it over and done with. Why are you just like waiting for him to piss you off again? Then, then do something indirectly to him. Like just get it over and done with. Like, do you know what I mean? Get ahead of the game. This is why you was in this place. This is why you're in the situation in the first place. He was not ahead of your game. Henry was. Henry was ahead. And now you got jealous of him. How about you get ahead of him now and just start like, do you know what I mean? Wrap him up. That's what you're on. Someone used one of the suits. We had a spare in the back, a yellow one. Someone used it. Now none of them are acting right. Uh, from what I understand, the building is on lockdown. No one is allowed in or out, you know, especially concerning any 
previous employees. When we get it all sorted out, we may move you to the day shift. A position just became available. 1987, five more kids. He didn't know what felt better. Getting Whoa. back to the suit after two long years of waiting or knowing how devastating this would be to Henry the next morning. He didn't even try to hide his crime this time. Okay, just so I think, it, I think it's a thing of like tormenting uh, uh, Henry instead of like, you know what I mean? Seeing him like devastated and stuff is giving him more like the juice is flowing way more than if you just killed him. I mean, I see it. That's very sadistic, but. I mean, I'm not surprised now, man. This guy is going around killing kids, man. Like, I, I, you know what I mean? It's in character. More blood on Henry's hands. He'd failed to protect the kids again. The restaurant had only been open for a few weeks, but William was sure that this would get it to close. Good. If he couldn't have Freddy's, no one would. Whenever a new pizzeria opened, he would be there. But as he sat in his bunker, something else started to linger in William's mind. He had seen something strange. The old withered animatronics, they had been wandering around the building, spurred on by the puppet. It was almost like those old robots were trying to save the kids. Save them? They couldn't, obviously, but still how were they moving it was almost like they had been given life somehow Did he hey so the robots are always trying to save you security guard getting bitten instead of like scare you during the day shift was that bite meant for for him william's curiosity was stronger now than his bloodlust he had to learn more but how there was no way he'd ever be able to get inside another freddy's pizzeria heck there was practically no way a freddy's would ever open again he needed to create something new something brand new he needed to create his own pizzeria due to the massive success and even more so the unfortunate closing of freddy fazbear's pizza it was clear that the stage was set no pun intended for another contender in children's entertainment. Circus Baby's Pizza World. This, this would be the place where he could continue his work. No longer just murdering, experimenting. This could be like the third game now. Kids, and he needed them a lot. Or something. And knowing that he couldn't show his face on the restaurant floor, he needed a way of remotely capturing his victims and preserving them for his work. With that goal in mind, he designed a new breed of animatronic. Their endoskeletons fluid and flexible. He equipped them with sound lures that could mimic voices. They could isolate Damn. children. They could incapacitate and contain them with zero direct input from him. It was brilliant. He was brilliant. Far beyond the simple bars and wires of Henry's designs. And the characters he chose for this were uniquely his. His new roster wasn't going to be tainted by Henry's disgusting barnyard bird. Instead, it was back to his characters, his creations. Freddy, Bonnie, Foxy. As well as two special ones. The first, Ballora, was an homage to the woman who left him. Now, she would never leave him again. The second, the titular baby, was designed with his baby in mind. Elizabeth, his youngest child. She would always be daddy's little girl. The one that listened to him. The one that obeyed until the day that she didn't. Daddy, why won't you let me play with her? What? This guy is unhinged. Can someone stop him? Where is L from Death Note when you need him, bro? So I gotta get L in a case. The day before a circus baby's pizza world opened, she disobeyed. She didn't listen. Left alone with baby, she got too close. The animatronic ripped in half and swallowed her whole. What the hell? The child fading into eternal darkness. By the time Afton found her, it was too late. She was gone. He immediately canceled the launch of circus babies under the guise of a gas leak. But wait, as he sat there at the foot of the stage, he noticed that something was different. The eye color of the robot had changed. Baby had been built with blue eyes, but now they were emerald green, the same color as Elizabeth's. Was There's no way. There? Could this all be connected to the There's no way. animatronics that he had seen at Freddy's? He had to know more. His mourning turned to excitement. He had to return to where it all started. 1993. Pathetic. This place was pathetic. Henry had clearly tried to reopen one final time with those old original animatronics from so long ago. Ago, but William's damage to the brand had been permanent. These things stank of death. They hadn't been washed in decades. But even if they. Oh, the, 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 the. There's kids in there that I haven't found yet. So of course it stinks of death. Unless you guys know something I don't. He didn't remove the bodies from the suits. So, bro, that smell is crazy.
had, nothing could wash away the stink of murder that haunted these halls. One night, then another, then another. William repeatedly snuck into the old, broken restaurant to lure the living animatronics to him, one by one dismantling them, robbing them of their endoskeletons. The metal had to be the secret. It had to contain the remnants of life itself. But he had to know for sure. Leaping out of a room that was invisible to the animatronics programming, he dragged the oversized robotic skeletons back to his underground workshop, back to where Circus Baby watched on with glowing, curious eyes. Eyes that somehow felt alive. Not knowing what else to do, William felt oh the robotic God. Five animatronic endoskeletons reduced down to one silvery puddle of goo. Could he transfer this living metal to his own creations? He had to try. He picked up a syringe and filled it with the molten metal and injected the goo into Funtime Freddy's twisted, wiry endoskeleton. No way that works. Coils came to life. Like snakes in a pile, what had once been cold, lifeless metal moved and jolted on its own. He'd done it. He had unlocked the secret to life itself. Except something was clearly wrong. The movements were erratic. They were violent, angry. Baby didn't act this way. She had been calm, collected. This was clearly something else. Something mindless and frantic. Perhaps by mixing the souls and then portioning them out, he had created incomplete beasts. He would need mm. to truly understand it. He needed more of this remnant. As he searched the old pizzeria one more time for any remaining scraps of metal, the ghosts attacked. His past victims come to collect their due, all led by Cassidy. The five Let's lined up go! <laughs> Let's fucking go. Yo, I'm with this. Okay. The scientific implications of this were incredible. Ghosts, real ghosts that he could see all standing against him. But what could they do? What couldn't they do? He panicked as Cassidy approached. How do you stop something that's already Come on, Cassidy, Maybe let's go. That resulted in their death in the first place. He would get into his suit like old times. He would get a piece of car or something. Them just like the day that they died. He was the genius. He was the one in the suit. He was the one in charge. The spring lock snapped into place. Maybe it was his frantic movements. Maybe it was the leaky abandoned restaurant. Maybe it was just fate coming to collect its due. He didn't know. The only thing he did know was that his brain was suddenly filled with searing white hot pain as hundreds of metallic pins and gears stabbed into his Yo! skull on all sides. All he could do was collapse, blood slowly oozing out of the suit and pooling onto the floor. I above. mean, good? So deserved? But something makes me feel like this isn't the end, bro, because I feel like he's turning into half robot, half human, bro. The movie version of this was so cool. Bro, we might have to watch the movie. We might have to watch the movie. I might have to go like deep into this chat. I don't know. I'm kind of, I'm kind of invested. I'm kind of invested. Only 30 minutes in. Damn, we're not even like, <laughs> bro, we're not even halfway through. But 30 minutes in, I'm kind of invested, bro. Him. It couldn't end. Didn't like this. didn't the movie have uh Corey Corey Ken Kenshin in it as well? On oh, my trip. Or was it barely it easy? Wouldn't end like this. His work was unfinished. Unable to move, his only option was to survive, to live, to keep living. It took days lying in his own blood, but yeah. eventually someone found I wonder him. how big his role was in a normal it. report. When he saw the animatronics torn apart in the middle of the party room floor, it caused him to file an immediate report of a break-in. An owner would have to come in and claim the damage. And who else would it be other than Henry? Hope jumped in Afton's heart. Henry would see him. They were partners, after all. He would be the one to help save him, to get him out of this suit to relieve him from this tremendous pain. Henry entered the secret room. His eyes fell on Afton sitting there in the pool of red, and Henry, saying nothing, turned and walked away. Let's, just <laughs> let's go! That's my nigga right there, Henry! Bro, let's go. Thank you, because I would have done the exact same thing, my nigga. I would have done the exact same thing. They, we, we're still suspect of him killing our door as well. And then, like, all this sus stuff. Oh, yeah, come on, bro. You get what you deserve. Due to budget restrictions, the previously mentioned safe rooms are being sealed at most locations, including this one. Nothing is being taken out beforehand, so if you left anything inside, then it's your own fault. Management also requests that this room not be mentioned to family, friends, or insurance representative. And so there Afton would sit, hanging on for 30 years, trapped behind the walls with an iron hill. <laughs> 30 years is absolutely insane. <laughs> you Used to die. Most of this is things that we already knew. Stuff that's been established. I mean, I didn't notice.
established time and time again by the games. That said, there are two things that I absolutely have to address. The first and biggest is the placement of sister location, or more specifically, Elizabeth's death. To me, evidence in game seems to suggest that it was meant to come before the crying child's death in 1983. The biggest oh. clue to this is that the crying child saw something. Remember what you saw is the phrase that's repeated over and over again by psychic friend Fredbear, aka William Afton speaking through a walkie-talkie in the Fredbear plushie's stomach. But what what did he see? Well, I think we can tell based on how the nightmare animatronics are visualized. They have mouths in their stomachs, just like baby ripping in half at the waist to swallow a kid. There's also the empty girl's room, one presumably left behind by a dead sister. And lastly, it explains why he's scared, and more specifically, why Afton wants him scared. He needs his kids to stay away from the animatronics. He doesn't want them getting too close, because the last time one of his kids got too close to a robot, his daughter died. That's then why he sets up the nightmare. To scare both Mike and uh, the okay, I, the I mean, it, yes, it makes forward. sense. That's why books like the character encyclopedia outright suggest that we play as the crying child in FNAF 4. That's why he has a nanny cam following the crying Bro, there's child. There's so many FNAF so games, man. He tabs on his kids when they're out of his sight. He can't let another Elizabeth situation happen. The death of Elizabeth also gives William Afton extra motivation for killing. He's a grieving father. His daughter was taken away from him, so Charlie should die as well. He's lashing out at the world after losing his kids. And again, we know that at least one of his children had to have died prior to Charlie's death, based on the mound of dirt that we see in Midnight Motorist. It also allows circus babies to open and close earlier in the timeline, which is how you wind up with Funtime Foxy appearing as Mangle in the FNAF 2 location. Basically, Elizabeth Bro, all of these, first has I, everything I, it needs to fix, yeah, except for I the don't most know. important thing, the murder weapon. Why would Afton be building an animatronic Mangle, with a giant like, claw what the stomach hell? so early in the timeline? At this point, he just has no motive. It just doesn't make makes sense prior to 1983. At this point in the story, he hasn't killed anyone, and we know for a fact that the missing children's incident is 1985. So Elizabeth's death coming before any of those events just doesn't work. Hence why I placed it where I did in the narrative timeline. So, question. Why didn't the author of this, like, why is it so sporadic? Why is it so, like, muddled up, the timeline? Was that the author's intentions or was it a thing of he just carried on adding things onto it? Do you know what I mean? As the story or the story, I guess, got bigger and bigger and bigger. He started adding on stuff to it, adding on lore, stuff like that. And that's why the timelines are so like wonky. And do you know what I mean? Like just making things up as they go along. I've got that feeling. Because he is an older baby. You're not older. I mean, Oda does the same thing, but... Afton's Nothing beats Oda is also a bit tricky. We know that he returned to the FNAF 1 location to break down the original animatronics in order to harvest their remnant. We know that he melts down five things to become one thing. Candy Cadet makes that very clear. So the five things are the five endoskeletons from the various animatronics. That would be totally fine if it weren't for one huge problem. On his fifth visit to the pizzeria, Afton gets springlocked. So either the five becoming one starts in 1993, but then finishes 30 years later when he re-emerges from the wall to add the last endoskeleton into his pile, or he's had himself some reason to return to the original location after harvesting all the stuff that he can. It's not ideal, but it's the one angle that makes the most sense. William still wasn't back. Weird. Michael knew his father sometimes traveled for work, disappearing for days on end, but usually there was some sort of notice, a phone call, a post-it, something. It's not like Michael and his father were close, far from it, but as a household of two suffering men coping with years of tragedy and loss, there was at least some element of communication between the two of them. They were united by a name and a shared pain. This time, though, things felt different. William had left nothing. His absence was longer. There were no check-ins, no updates, just silence. Oh yeah, he must be wondering where the hell his dad is. Michael knew about his father, it was that he had contingencies, safety checks, backup plans. His father was a careful and guarded man. He held his cards close to his chest, and as such, William had prepared him in the event that something like this ever happened. Normally, his father kept his home office locked, but in the event of an unexpected, prolonged absence, Michael had been instructed to enter his father's office and look behind an empty set of shelves mounted in the corner of the room. Rolling his eyes, Michael entered the office. Never fully understood how William was able to spend so many hours of his days locked up in here. There was just nothing- Bro, that's crazy. He got to the attic in the first episode or the basement in the first episode bro <laughs> what if this happened in like the attack on time story you know what i mean it took us shit how many episodes bro got to the basement in the first epi that's crazy
to do. Most of this place was empty. Wait, he that's crazy. That's crazy. <laughs> I'm comparing this attack to Attack on Titan, but it low-key kind of fits, bro. Eren's dad got bitten up by, by a Titan. Obviously, we know what Titan that is. L like, the Titans are the, like, the, 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 the robots. Wait, chat. Hold on, bro. There's something similar going on here. Ragnar Why does that kind of make sense? Expecting to find an emergency contact list, a family safety deposit box. But what he actually found there was completely unexpected. Father. It's me, Michael. I did it. I found it. It was right where you said it would be. The shelf swung open and revealed a giant industrial elevator, one that led straight down into an underground bunker. But, but that was impossible. Hidden inside his childhood home was a secret entrance to an enormous Damn, underground Damn, he had a whole entire back cave. Didn't make sense. Seriously, it didn't make any sense. And yet, here it was, mapped directly underneath the floor plan of the house that he'd grown up in, lost his brother in, been tortured in. Michael thought that he'd known his father, a prideful, sad, angry man man with petty everyday problems but clearly he'd been living with a stranger this entire time his father had secrets suddenly the days of william being locked inside of his office made sense he'd been here the entire time where was here though was this circus baby's entertainment and rentals the circus baby restaurant always did seem to be a deeply personal project for father a failure of his that cut unusually deep especially after that first location had to be closed prematurely due to the gas leaks after that day father really did seem to change to lose himself even more in mm -hmm. clearly the entrance he had so uh, i wonder if the son's gonna figure this all out facility one that required crawling through vents to navigate his father had been working here but in secret why and that's when he found her at the end of the facility circus baby oh he figured it out toy. except something was different about her she wasn't like the others the way she talked the story oh she told. damn this wasn't just a robot she was alive somehow and not only was she alive she also felt familiar there is something bad inside of me i'm broken i can't be fixed will you help me was this his sister? William's baby girl? But how? Why? What was this place? He dug around some old files and found blueprints outlining the features of these animatronics. Storage containers, voice mimicking, parental tracking. And was that a child in Freddy's stomach? Was his father collecting and experimenting on kids? Were all Bro, father's getting past, exposed. That the animatronics came to life. At Finally. Night, that there were murders done in all the pizzerias. That his father Bro, he's learning everything. All of it. Suddenly, Michael's mind flashed back to his persistent nightmares throughout his childhood. Had it's all starting to make sense. Too? Tears stung in his eyes as anger, fear, and confusion filled his body. His father's secrets were pouring out. William wasn't just a lame, overworked father. He was a monster toying with life itself. Suddenly, everything clicked. He frantically looked around the room, blinking human heads on poles, staring back at him. Green eyes, his sister. Blue Ooh. eyes, his brother. Closed eyes his mom all just staring expectantly they oh my days what the William fuck working down here trying to make believable humans literally rebuilding the family that they had both lost the small little girl robots with their british accents roaming the hallways of this underground facility suddenly turned okay. out a whole new con that is freaky that is freaky chat hold on chat because if i see that in the dark that's getting the biggest pun ever bro Bro, yeah, I was wondering that, by the way. Why are some of the voices proper British? Like, you niggas were not British. So why is the sound scarier if he's British? Because what do I sound scarier? Um, either way, this is getting punted. I'm going to let out the, the, the craziest scream first. And then I'm going to punt the fuck out of this baby. Oh, <laughs> my days. Hot one, hot two. Five sheet. Context. Hey, I'm in there. It's just the same person. Were those meant it's to be It's just the same person. That sounds like Moody. Moody. Marta? Wait, what's her name, chat, from Harry Potter? Moody Margaret, maybe? I can't remember. I'm in there. It's just the same person. Were those meant to be his sister a replacement for her? a clone was william building clones of his sister they seemed to know him after morning myrtle morning myrtle yes thank you where did moody margaret come from come from oh do you know what i think moody margaret <laughs> it's from horrid henry <laughs> i think that's from horrid henry presence they were all there they didn't 
recognize me at first, but then they thought I was you. He always did have a bit of a resemblance to his father. Michael's mind reeled Bro. as the reality of his world crumbled to dust. No, no, he had to get them out of there. If this really was his sister, heck, if any of these things were human, souls, whatever remnant of the humans that they once were, they needed to be rescued. They always put us back inside. There's nowhere for us to hide here. Led by the voice of Circus Baby, he marched through the now empty halls of the Funtime Auditorium. He would lead them. He would protect them. And finally, he would be able to forgive himself for the killing of his brother so many years. You are in the scooping room now. Oh, did they trick him? Either way, chat, this is really making me want to go and play the games. I can't lie. Even though I'm a straight up G chat, I'm definitely not getting scared. Unless that baby thing turns up, bro got scuffed, GG. <laughs> bro literally got Arkham. <laughs> he got Arkham, bro. <laughs> that shit appeared out of the shadows of like Batman, bro. <laughs> he got snapped up. He got snapped up, bro. That's an Arkham move right there, <laughs> This is killing me. <laughs> Look how he got snapped up, bro. He would be able to forgive himself for the killing of his brother so many years. Bro, I've done that move. I've done that move so many times in the Batman games. The scooper only hurts for a moment. Scooper? That violent extraction arm? Michael had seen that one in the pile of blue Damn. Something about rendering the magical silver metal inside useless. In reality, prior to getting himself spring-locked and put behind the wall, William's methods had become increasingly sophisticated, with a mechanized arm that could infuse new bodies with a soul. William could finally give and take away life. The only thing he needed were the bodies. But William wasn't the only one looking for bodies, as Michael was about to learn. But if we looked like you, then we could hide. If we looked like you, then we would have somewhere to go. Whoa, these are the robots turning. This is this is like I robot, bro. Not that I've watched that movie. I haven't watched that movie in a while, but from what I remember, the robots wanted to become more human, bro. You know what I mean? And for those of you who are wondering why, um, Mind your fucking business. Shit. So what the Michael robots gonna robots are gonna hunt for like humans now? All right. He was gonna help. I need to remember that name. Animatronics. They've been they've probably said it like a thousand times in this video, and I haven't like <laughs> grasped it yet. Haunted tubes and wires of these animatronics escape, just not in the way that he anticipated. His sister had lied to him, another game of pretend. The scooper plowed forward, digging its extraction arm into his body. As he heard his bones ripping through his flesh, Michael blacked out. But something is wrong with me. I should be dead, but I'm not. They turn the him into one of us. Was not his own. They turn him into one of us. With the tangle of wires and spirits that lived inside of him, his body felt like an overfilled balloon, begging to burst as day by day, <laughs> week by week, his flesh. Oh, that looks funny, so I don't know. What he's saying is obviously tragic, but like that walk is hilarious. Bro. Balloon begging to burst as day by day, week by week, his flesh began to sag and discolor. Ooh. He was a walking, talking, rotting corpse, alive but wishing he wasn't. He was a puppet, a walking shell. And while he did his best to conceal his fate, there was only so much a man filled with robot spaghetti could do. The entity in his innards would eventually leave, but by that point, the damage had been done. His decaying flesh stank, turning into oh a my god. Guy. But still, even with no bones, even with rotting purple flesh and begging to die, Michael can. But, bro, wait. He turned. He turned purple. Guy. Bro. But still, he... decaying flesh stank, turning him into a literal purple guy. But still, <laughs> what? That nigga's one of the Cram twins now, bro. Who remembers the Cram twins? <laughs> Oh, 
Still, even with no bones, even with rotting purple flesh and begging to die, Michael continued to live. That silvery metal remnant injected by the scooper meant that he couldn't die. His wow, enemy okay. also refused to die. Immortality. He down there in his sister's location had rocked him to his core. His father had killed and captured dozens. His experiments had killed oh, his sister in the kind animation. Hundred. All his childhood. He was actively trying to build human replicants. He didn't know where his father was, but Michael knew that he was out there somewhere. Oh, I like this. So we get into like, I wouldn't say the two evils, but like, do you know what I mean? Like we got one person going against the antagonist now. We got, we, we kind of got a pro tag. Human replicants. He didn't know where his father was, but Michael knew that he was out there somewhere. I've been living in shadows. There is only one thing left for me to do now. I'm going to come find you. Michael had to correct for the sins of his father. He had to make things right. Michael would burn Fazbear Entertainment to the ground. I mean, what else could you do? I mean, that's been a long time coming, chat. I'll be real, bro. Like, how have we not done that yet? It's absolutely crazy. We should have been doing that. We should have been done that. That should have been... By the way, where are all the detectives in this, like... Bro, broski. So we don't know where none of the kids went. We had no clues. Like the amount of CCTV cameras there was just about because of this. Because because of paranoid Billy, there must have been some CCTV cameras you could have locked into and been like, yeah, give me that, give me the security footage for that. Like, do you know what I mean? But then again, Billy was a genius though. So yeah when your skin was permanently purple. Michael's strategy was simple. He would apply for night security guard positions at the old defunct pizzeria location. Bro, how are you walking around with your decomposed purple while skin? Fat, and no one's saying anything. Bro, how's, how's it not been snapped, snapped up by the niggas in Area 52? And all these old shuttered locations did Or Area 52 or Area 51. and squatters were always looking to get inside these abandoned buildings. And yet no one ever really wanted to work an overnight graveyard shift unless they were practically out of options. Enter Mike. Any leftover pieces is yours. Sign me up. Sign me. <laughs> Sign me up. Otters were always looking to get inside these abandoned buildings, and yet no one ever really wanted to work an overnight graveyard shift unless they were practicing. Any leftover pieces, yes, one one, sir. Where do I sign up? Changing his name each time to ensure that no one was able to follow his paper trail. Once inside, he could tamper with the animatronics and figure out how they worked, writing about his experiences in his security logbook. Well, there he would listen to the old tape where upper management awkwardly welcomed new recruits to their summer jobs, even though he was working there nowhere near the summer months. He heard the gory details of his father's franchise from the outsiders looking in, confused and afraid about what was happening in the walls around them. Sometimes he would see his brother in the form of the Golden Freddy suit, it's me appearing on the walls around him. Except now, there was something else there. He was no longer alone. Another angrier presence was oh the suit, as if two spirits were forced to share the same body. And Golden Freddy would attack him now. It was aggressive. Its vengeance wanted to lash out at anyone with the Afton name. Anyone who wore a security guard outfit. Over time, Mike worked his way through the old restaurants. The original pizzeria, the bigger, better Freddy Fazbear's. He spent weeks there looking for clues as to his father's whereabouts. And each time at the end of his week shift, he would then set the location on fire. Remnant can't survive. Damn. Can't so no, but I like this. Be crushing out now. still existed inside seemed like a winning strategy. All this revisiting of his past, though, was causing the nightmares to begin again. Hallucinations that brought him back to his childhood the guilt around killing his brother his dreams were oddly mixed with the shrill phone calls of the security guards but it would all be worth it in the end the goal was to eventually eventually stumble across the one location the one job that would finally reunite him with his father little did mike know that that day would come sooner than he expected 2023 an advertisement came across mike's tv has we in 2023 now when I, when, we've just passed like halfway through the video are we in 2023 chat Frights, a new horror attraction inspired by the awful crimes that occurred around Freddy Fazbear's Pizza so many years ago. It made Mike sick. People looking to make a quick buck off the tragedy of others. Off his Damn, own no, that's, that's, that's kind of crazy. Entertainment. Regardless, he had to be a part of it. If this team was combing through his family's history, they might stumble <laughs> across be a part of it. Be useful. And if his father was that's truly tough. still alive as he suspected, there would be no way that he wouldn't show up here. Maybe finally. Finally, this could be the final chapter in his family's marathon of tragedy. Mike applied for the job and was immediately handed the keys. Years of doing this had taught him that security guards rarely receive thorough security checks. They also liked how creepy Mike looked. They thought it was a costume on theme for the job. What little they knew. Wow, okay. I came back for another night. I promise it'll be a lot more interesting this time. 
For weeks, there was nothing. But just as Mike considered giving up, he received the call that he'd been waiting for for years. You're not gonna believe this. We found one. A real one. Could this finally be him? Sure enough, there he was. William inside what? his iconic golden Bonnie Springlock suit. Yeah. And now was green and decaying with age. And there they were. A small family of broken men finally reunited. It's been a long time, Dad. Mike had always struggled with the phantoms of his past haunting him, but now all the animatronics he'd encountered over the past months hopping from pizza. Oh my god, child, look at that, bro. <laughs> the pizzeria suddenly sprang to life their burned faces haunting him as he tried to keep track of his father on the cameras it would seem that william's mere presence had put the spirits on high alert ultimately they were harmless more annoying than anything else but there was one that felt different from the others one that was more than just a mere phantom the security puppet if he looked at the cameras at just the right moment he could see it floating there through the halls he could even see its reflection in the water pooled on the ground it would seem like he wasn't the only one there on a mission. While he was dealing with Springtrap, Michael assumed that this one was likely dealing with the spirits of this place, finally setting them to rest. Hopefully this means a happier day for all of us, Mike thought to himself. And in that moment, he felt the air around him release, like pressure being let out of a bottle. The building sighed, as if five spirits had finally been allowed to move on. He had the sense that his brother was a part of them. He rigged the wiring inside the building to misfire, and the dry, desiccated walls erupted in flames. Okay, well... It is finished. Finally, it's over, right? Except we're only like just halfway through. Like, okay, what happens next? Except it was not. Somehow, through sheer force of <clears throat> will, Afton remained. He had survived, and Mike Bro. had find a new way of finishing off his father. Luckily, the solution would present itself later that year. Not from Mike, but from another victim that had been left in his father's wake. We're talking about becoming a Fazbear Entertainment franchisee. Restaurant ownership and management. Something almost anyone can do with a limited degree of success. You are now the face of the newly rebranded Freddy Fazbear's Pizza. Fazbear Entertainment as a brand had been closed for years. William had been stuck in a suit in a wall. The only person who legally could bring the franchise back was Henry, but he'd largely pulled out of the franchise around the time of his father's disappearance. Something was up. Surely this had to be some kind of a trick, right? Mike, doing what he did best, applied for a franchise and immediately got the job. There was just one thing out of the ordinary. Paragraph four. If you are playing this tape, that means that not only have you been checking outside at the end of every shift, as you were instructed to do, but also that you have found something that meets the criteria of your special obligations under paragraph four. No employment contract he'd ever signed required him to keep special lookout for independently moving animatronics outside the restaurant. Outside? Now, something was up here. Henry was luring them all back. Rather than trying to go to them, like Mike had done for years, Henry was doing the opposite. He was putting them all under the same roof. He was finishing them off for good. Mike knew this wasn't meant to be a restaurant. It was meant to be a prison, a containment vessel. A Wow. It's meant to trap them all in so they could finally end the madness. It took a few nights, but eventually everyone was there. His father, the puppet, the robot spaghetti that had once violated his body. And Bro, this, this rope, this, this one in the middle. That one's creepy, man. I don't like it. This is giving me weird vibes, man. I don't know. There's something about it sister now hopelessly devoted to serve the man that had once gotten her killed it was time he had been instructed to seal the doors and leave but while he locked everything down he didn't move on if this was truly meant to be the end if the remnant needed to be washed away he needed to be a part of that this is where your story ends and to you my brave volunteer who somehow oh. found this job not intended for you although there was a way out planned for you i have a feeling that's not what you want i have a feeling that you are right where you want to be and to so he stayed in the fire be still and give up your spirits. They don't belong to you. For most of you, I believe there is peace and perhaps more waiting for you after the smoke clears. Although for one of you, the darkest pit of hell has opened to swallow you whole. So don't keep the devil waiting, old friend. And with that, I mean, Manigay, why didn't you think you're going to hell too? For the reason why your brother died. You definitely going to hell, but he's going to a deeper part of hell for sure. Billy? Hell yeah. Hell yeah was over. The Afton legacy died with all of them trapped inside of a literal box. As the flames danced around the office, Mike, for the first time in decades, was happy. But William wasn't gone yet. Although the darkest pit of hell was open and waiting for him, something or someone wouldn't allow him to move on. Instead, he found himself locked. By the way, where is Henry in all of this? It, is Henry still alive? What's he doing? What's he up to, bro?
like he's scarily been just cut out of the story broski where you been at can we get an update in moments from his past the pizzeria his son's room his underground bunker it was as if his brain's neurons were all firing at once overloaded mixing and matching all his biggest fears regrets failures what was this place how did he get here he called out into the silence <laughs> then they started <gasps> wait that scared me <laughs> wait the mother got me with that audio that audio is crazy chat that just put shivers down my fucking spine. I didn't like that. I didn't like that. Coming without warning, animatronics, both new and old, began to jump out at him, bite him, rip Bro. him limb from limb. The pain was immeasurable. Make it stop. Make it stop. William, for the first time, longed for death, an end to this torture. Just as it felt like he couldn't take it anymore, everything was quiet again. It was as if the world had been reset. There was a brief moment of quiet, and then the onslaught began again. Dozens of faces from his past all focused on him. A waking nightmare that he couldn't escape from. You know what? Maybe he is in hell already. It was his own personal hell hell but why why couldn't he just die and then he saw wait henry was the guy who built a prison for the anima animatronics to burn them he was the one talking oh he was the one talking see chat oh my i'm trying to follow chat it is a, it is a lot of information it is a lot of information my bad for not catching that okay cool so everything i said about okay cool so yeah some some of the stuff i said just wasn't right so yeah of characters he never thought he'd see again. escape from more pain more ripping it was his own personal hell but why why couldn't he just die and then he saw them a group of characters he never thought he'd see again those janky stolen oh yeah that started everything the mediocre melodies it had all started to go wrong once they showed up once henry had made them but mixed in with their obnoxious southern drawls william heard something else it was barely a whisper but he could just make out the words he tried to release you he tried to release us but i'm not gonna let that happen i will hold you here i will keep you here no matter how many times they burn us that voice. He knew that voice, but from where? Greetings from the fire and from the one you should not have killed. The one he shouldn't have killed. William felt what? he'd done a lot of awful things, but his little brother was always the one that stood out. Not Charlie, his drunken act of revenge. Not Susie, his first true murder. No. Instead, it was the one that he had lost control. Oh, wait. The one that he had broken beyond repair for no good reason other than because he could. The oh, I'm bugging. I'm bugging. I'm bugging. I'm thinking this is this is this is Michael. This ain't Michael. This is Billy. Oh my days, chat. I'm bugging. Chat, I can't tell what's real and what's not. My reality is shifting. What is this video doing to me? Shame I can't tell two people apart. <laughs> can't tell two people purple people apart. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Wait, now I see where you white people come from, bro. Oh, fairs. I get it now. This is this is kind of trouble you guys have to deal with, bro. And they call you racist for it. Oh my god, how inconsiderate of them. The one he shouldn't have killed. William fought back. He'd done a lot of awful things, but there was always the one that stood out. Not Charlie, his drunken act of revenge. Not Susie, his first true murder. No. Instead, it was the one that he had lost control with. The one that he had broken beyond repair for no good reason other than because he could. The, the one first that he one? stuffed inside the golden bear that his partner used to wear. Cassidy. They were back, and now they were trying to punish him. To make him suffer like he'd made them suffer. It was almost like William and Cassidy's souls had been locked together, fused by a collective rage and spite. Each refusing to move on but while cassidy was so focused on taking revenge they actually did the one thing that would be the downfall for so many others they kept william alive even though fire should have destroyed the remnant that was coursing through his being cassidy kept william breathing bro billy has got so many fucking lies bro just die this nigga's plot armor is nuts he's surviving scorching fires Paving the way for his escape. William's will was so strong, his soul so powerful that he managed to put a part of himself inside the circuitry that housed the Springlock suit. And there, his consciousness lay inside a single circuit board, waiting. Waiting. What? 
Is he a Horcrux or something? Remember Horcrux from uh, Harry Potter, bro? He split his soul, bro. You have to kill all. All right. For someone to find him <laughs> and set him free, a person that no one would suspect. You might bro is low key Voldemort. Case. There's good reason for that. I don't know him. There is no good way for me to make him fit in. Here's what I do know. We know with a high amount of certainty that Michael Afton is the character that we play as up until Ultimate Custom Night. Mike Schmidt and Fritz Smith, the security guards for FNAF 1 and FNAF 2 respectively, get fired for quote, tampering with the animatronics and odor. So weird connection between the two of them, right? But now, look at the phantom animatronics that are haunting us in FNAF 3. They use models from both FNAF 1 and FNAF 2. Meaning, whoever is sitting in that security guard chair, Fazbear Fright, they have to have seen both locations and their Michael? and that's not all their designs are burnt it's a weird detail in the game and it's something that the character encyclopedia repeatedly calls attention to the burned texture for these phantom animatronics why is that so unusual though fazbear frights is the first time in the franchise that we hear about anything burning down from that point on of the story it's like the characters turn pyro and are suddenly setting fires left and right <laughs> but for the first three games nothing ever catches fire the animatronics are just moved or repurposed in some way so when did they burn and why would our security guards see them as being burned someone has to have been going location to location setting these places on fire purging the sins of the past we know we're definitely playing as mike and sister location in fnaf 6 based on the in-game dialogue and in fnaf 4 there's an easter egg where we can hear the phone call from night one of fnaf 1 meaning that whoever's in that bedroom has heard the recording as a security guard we also know that mike has seen the nightmare animatronics based on his drawings in the security logbook so overall there is solid evidence that connects all of fnaf's one through one through six You'll also notice how the character encyclopedia doesn't have a page for Mike Afton. This thing has a page for Chocolate Bunny Bonnie, but not Michael. Some tells me they don't want us to confirm how many games he's been in, because that would confirm too much of the theory. In short, this gives us an incredibly compelling and complete narrative. Mike as our protagonist, and William his father as our antagonist. Mike okay. accidentally kills his brother in Fredbear's mouth, which begins our story and sets William down his pathway of destruction. Mike is then haunted by the guilt of his past and is looking to make things right across the rest of the games. In location he learns what his father's been up to and realizes what he has to do to correct it after failing to finish the job in fnaf 3 he ultimately helps henry end it all in fnaf 6 it is great it is a clean narrative there is just one problem timing mike's quest can't really start until he's been down to sister location seen baby and gotten himself scooped that's when he finds out about afton's secret life it's also when he's gonna start to smell because you know he's a walking talking rotting corpse bro i don't see how he got away with that i'll be honest like he was literally a walking corpse his skin was literally purple and no one thought to say something to tell him that you stink like bro bro was out here roaming the streets looking like one part of the cramp twins looking like flipping milo from the tweedies i think it's called that tweenies you had this nigga roaming the streets looking like milo from the tweenies chat look at this nigga He's been down to sister location, seen baby, and gotten himself scooped. That's when he finds out about Afton's secret life. It's also when he's gonna start to smell, because, you know, he's a walking, talking, rotting corpse. And we know that he's not going down into the bunker until the Funtime animatronics have been made, Freddy's has been closed, and Afton is out of the picture. That all should be happening post-1993, after William is sealed behind a wall. But that then presents us with a few problems. Afton has already dismantled the original animatronics, as we see in the FNAF 3 minigames. How are those things getting burned if they're already deconstructed but more importantly we see fnaf 2 paychecks with the date 1987 that is way earlier than i think it can be to be fair fritz smith's pink slip on night seven doesn't have a date but it's a bit weird to say that the first few nights are in 1987 and then employee number three is hired on years after the restaurant closes <laughs> Fazbear Entertainment was dead. There is no need for you to return to work next week as Fazbear Entertainment is no longer a corporate entity. All debts had been paid, all assets redistributed. The company was outright dissolved. Even the memories of the horrors that had happened there started okay. to fade away in the public consciousness. So this is post. People were gone too. William was dead. Henry was gone. A whole Michael generation or of William? Emily's and Afton's had post lost Afton. their lives to the horrors of the people. This is post all Afton, of them right? Collateral damage to the man in the bunny suit. Everyone the company had ever touched was dead and gone well all except one henry Here's child support you deadbeat i'm keeping the diamond ring i also set the house on fire clara afton she'd been there in the early days back when things with william were good they'd had the perfect home 
Oh yeah, no, I thought the mom died. She didn't. She just like she went away, right? And that's why he made the 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 amateur uh, amateur of her, right? I thought she was dead, bro. Oh my god. Okay. Thriving business, the ideal family, but shortly after their youngest son died, things started to change. William had become distant, lost in his work, obsessive. She had watched him change from this irritatingly brilliant man that she had fallen in love with to a drunken monster struggling to hold himself together. And despite her trying to reach out to him in those desperate days, he was just too far gone. Why That could that whole song could have been a euthanism right there, chat. I'm not gonna lie. And uh yeah, I use words like euthanism, chat. Do you know what I mean? I'm kind of distinguished. I'm kind of a gentleman. I'm kind of distinguished as well. I've got a bit of class and decorum about me. So yeah, I use words like euthanism. Alright? I bet none of you know what that means. sake she had to leave the relationship and from there she largely faded into obscurity a mystery from william's past a footnote in his history and that was fine for her she wanted to leave that part of her life behind she tried to move forward never wanting to hear the name freddie fazbear again a time defined by mistakes and broken promises but then at what time does she leave though i don't know how you can leave your kids though do you know what i mean despite your 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 husband being an absolute whack job Leaving your kids, bro, is kind of insane to me. I know you lost one, but you had two others. Like, broski. The paperwork started to arrive. As Fazbear Entertainment began to close as a corporate entity, suddenly her... I think that word means other day, mind. Yeah, it does. Mail was flooded with notifications, requests, obligations. She had been there since the beginning, helping William in the early days of his business. And now, as a shareholder and sole living member of the Afton family, all copyrights and trademarks of both Afton Robotics and Fazbear Entertainment passed on to her. Memories Damn. of this past life that she had long left behind. Looking at the blueprints, the contracts, the memos, she felt old wounds begin to reopen. The regrets of a happy family that had been torn away from her. William had always been been brilliant that's what had attracted her to him in the first place but he'd also been too blinded by obsession and pride he was too jealous too petty too unable to actually see a bigger picture but now holding the paperwork that contained decades of heartbreak and trauma she realized it was her turn she was holding the power this was her chance and oh one my god in her what's head. she about to I do put them back together i will put them all <laughs> Oh my god. Just leave it be. <laughs> leave it be. What are you doing? Why? Why do you feel this way? You've got so much money now. You've acquired all of these assets. Go find yourself a nice man. Go make a new family. Go. You can do whatever you want. You can literally do whatever you want. Why do we have to fix them? It was her turn. She was holding the power. This was her chance. And one thought resonated in her head. I will put them back together. I will put them all back together. She would be the one to rebuild this family. To rebuild the pieces of that shattered life. To reclaim the kids that Fazbear had stolen from her. But how? Looking at William's work now laid out before her, she knew that he had been onto something. Collecting remnant. Robotic humanoids. Digital conscience transference. The pieces were all in place. They were just scattered fragmented it was almost like there were too many ideas going in too many different directions it was such an important idea that she reiterated that point to herself there were too many ideas going in too many different directions that said there had to be a way to save it all she just needed to put it all back together but how to rebuild her family she would first need to rebuild the franchise that had stolen them no the leave it dead and buried technology patents in the fazbear name she could this is the same franchise that killed off your family in the first place, man. Leave it dead and buried. I would think you would have severe PTSD from this and don't want anything to do with this. I thought you would have sold the rights to all the assets and gone on and had 
the rest of your life to live. I'm I'm actually really upset with her chat. I'm really upset. Converted the corporation back to an LLC, a structure for smaller businesses that are usually family owned. Ah. <sighs> The irony was fitting. From there, she would need Remnant, and lots of it. Remnant was the key. Clearly, in the later years of his life, William had been using Circus Babies Entertainment and Rentals as a remnant farm, sending robots to kids' birthday parties in the hopes of nabbing bits of the stuff here and yeah, there. Yeah, that's clearly, nuts, by the way. Enough. He had, what, like four, maybe five animatronics going out every week? No. It was a decent idea, but to get the remnant they required, it needed scale. Dozens, hundreds of animatronics all out there, all gathering remnant from unsuspecting customers but to do that would require help something will oh, she's trying to make this bigger and better she's trying to make this into a multi-million franchise she's like she's like the vince mcmahon of this industry right here we gotta make it bigger we gotta make it better what what are you doing she's really pissing me off because she understands to get these remnant whatever things she needs to kill kids but she's okay with that she's okay with, with putting people through the same pain she went through by killing off kids, yeah, you're you're cool with that. You're okay. You're this is this is this is sitting right within your stomach. William would never ask for. William had kept everything in house. His obsession with control limited him. Clara, though, she wasn't nearly that precious. A plan like this required partners, people outside of Fazbear, to do the heavy lifting. So she contacted. Chat. She's the real. She's the real demon in all of this. I'll be real. She's trying to make this into a multi like multi fucking million idea. Like, like, do you know what I'm saying? She's trying to scale this. The mid-sized delivery company, DLZ Shipping Solutions, oh my. build replicas of all the original animatronics. And with field delivery apps being all the rage, why not an animatronic delivery service? Order one to celebrate <laughs> your birthday. <laughs> oh shit. Let's do a little Uber Eats DoorDash version, bro. Oh, hey, chat, she's making me angry, bro. I said to God, I want to jump through that screen and let's not. She's pissing me off. Halloween party. How about a 4th of July picnic? We'll invite Liberty Chica and 4th of July Freddy on over. She would oh my sure God. Skins for every occasion. Chocolate skins. What's next? A battle pass? We getting DLCs? Bonnie's for Easter, Shamrock Freddy's for St. Patrick's Day, Dia de las Muertos, Chicas. Oh, that one's kind of cold, though. I can't lie. I can't lie. Bonnie's for Easter, Shamrock Shout Freddy's for St. Patrick's Day, Dia de las Muertos, Chicas. And thus, the Fazbear Funtime service was born. That's right. With the Fazbear Fun... Chat. Go back to, to somewhere in the beginning of the video. And I told you, isn't that Markiplier? Look. Separately though, what the hell is he You'll doing here? Was it Wait, I got pause because I got really actually like is his name Markiplier? Cause... Okay, yeah, cool. Ridiculous? Absolutely. Was it a sellout? No doubt. It was exactly the sort of thing that William would have hated, but it needed to be done to get enough remnant. Normally, the novelty of ordering an animatronic wore off after like what, one, maybe two times? But with new skins for new holidays, suddenly you had yourself an animatronic perfect for every occasion. It would I'm not gonna I'm not gonna lie, the new skin will be getting these jits to order like yeah. They hitting, they hitting the right markets, they hitting it right. The like, latest and greatest that Fazbear Entertainment LLC had to offer. Bro. And all the while they'd be collecting and returning the remnant back to her. In a word, it was brilliant. There was just one problem with it. No one trusted the Fazbear name. The company's brand was oh, still yeah, that's true. in the public eye. No one would want to hire animatronics from the restaurant true. franchise known for murdering children. Nothing kills a party quite like the threat of death, you know. So she needed to find a way to discredit the stories that had come before. She needed to win back the public's affections, reactivate some nostalgia for the spooky stories of their childhoods. She needed a game. Multiple games, in fact. They lied to us. They lied to all of us. They told us that the whole point... Oh, wait. This is becoming too meta. <laughs> I was struggling at the beginning of the video with, like, like separating reality from fiction. But she isn't about to say... 
She's about to do what I think she's about to do. PR game was to undo the bad PR done by a rogue indie game developer. But that's not true at all. Those indie games were designed to conceal and make light of what happened. This isn't just an attempt to rebrand. It's an elaborate cover-up. Struggling game developers were a dime a dozen online. Most working on their magnum opus between shifts at the Dollar General. So she found one. Steve just picked him out of obscurity. The right mix of desperate and doofus willing to say and do anything for a couple extra bucks. And he fell right in line. As a Expected, delivering stupid little things with dumb generic names like Mangle's Quest, Balloon Boy's Air Adventure, Five Nights at Freddy's, Bad Okay, child, this is becoming too... Oh, this is becoming too, like... I'm really losing myself in this. Like you guys said, the law gets deep, and I never knew it got this deep because I'm starting to lose my sense of reality because this can't be real this can't be real creator made himself a character of the story bro why it's it spun me he's why did he do that he's spitting me you're messing with my brain my brain is all just com combodulated now like i can't i can't deal with this <laughs> yo Gameplay with even worse graphics, but hey, they got the job done. People were suddenly talking about the clues inside of these things, searching for the hidden lore. They were actively making jokes about dead kids at pizzerias. Her husband's twisted history of serial murder had suddenly been reduced to a mere Nancy Drew mystery to be solved. The plan had worked. Freddy Fazbear's was suddenly more popular than ever. Things were going shockingly well. Her takeover and reboot of the franchise was full and complete. Suddenly infused with cash, she built the largest, most ambitious project yet, the Mega Pizza Plex. William had always been so visionary, but always thought so small scale. He was <laughs> careful to a fault. Not her though. She knew that this latest project needed to be big. Child, she is worse than him. She is worse than him. She is worse. I can't, this character like transformation from her, this character arc from her is nuts. How has she become the worst character? Like. Bro, she's killing kids by the by the thousands. She's door dashing kids. <laughs> she's uber eating kids, bro. Like it needed to be a palace for children, a place that got people talking and checking out the latest in Fazbear products. So with a steady supply of remnant flowing in, it was finally time. The stage supplies was of remnant flowing in is crazy. Goal: literally rebuilding a family. March 2035. The first was obvious. The crying child. Her little boy. The one that was the first to get ripped away from her. She'd seen down in his bunker that William had gotten very close to replicating artificial humans using animatronic technology. And so that's exactly what she would do. Rebuild her boy from the ground up using robotic parts. His shaggy brown hair, his favorite striped shirt, even down to small details that no one would notice, like the band-aid on his left knee. William's research had even found ways of making animatronics that could bleed and process food, making them virtually indistinguishable from a typical human he would what? never have any idea of what he actually was unless he was explicitly Bro. told the only things that could possibly ruin the illusion were any overrides to his internal system Billy if was a genius bro real shit cameras that he had in his eyes or cause some sort of a core reboot to his hard drive or x-ray his metallic bones then yeah he would be exposed but otherwise to the outside world I mean I think the free <laughs> x-ray his metallic bones and yeah i mean alongside with the x-rays and the metallic bones i think the three toes as well would be a very good indicator that this guy is not human why have you made him with three toes we've been through this we've been through this you realized given your your things five fingers made it more real like why have you now stuck gone back and tracked back and given your thing three toes he would be exposed but otherwise to the outside world he was just your typical normal human boy she worked down in the bowels of the pizza plex giving him life but it was one thing to build him it was another to help him remember his identity he died so young so early <laughs> in their history they gotta start replaying that clip by the way <laughs> that clip is crazy him just chomping down on his head with the sound effect as well is nuts him. It was another to help him remember his identity. He died so young, so 
early <laughs> in their history that there was no preserved memories for him. No <laughs> documentation that she could just <sighs> download into his digital brain. So bit by bit, she trained him, forcing him to remember who he was. In a corner of the room, she even made a makeshift dinner table. A reminder what the of the hell? Days. She's the actually lost it. Two brothers, a sister, a head's father, absolutely and gone. mother at the head of the table. The one like, in charge, the bro. one in command. The one bringing all of this to fruition. But his progress was admittedly slower than she would have liked. At first, he could only communicate through simple ones and zeros, then rudimentary drawings and crude letters. But bit by bit, images of his past life started to come through. Balloons, colors, houses, bears and faces, birthday parties. All for me. Gregory was alive. As the robot boy embraced her, she... There's my thing. Is he going to remember his life after he died type shit? Chat, is that... Because mm, that could be a problem. Felt the warmth that she hadn't in decades. This, this was the joy that she'd been working towards. This was what it was all for. Her son back in her arms again. The plan was working. She had to keep going. Next was William. If the family was truly going to be put together, she would need him. Bro, if exactly you're bringing back anybody, was, this is the nigga not to bring back. Bear's pizza place where Henry had trapped him. In fact, that's specifically why she insisted on building the pizza plex there over the sinkhole. It was the best place to hide what her true intentions were with the entire operation. Digging through the wreckage, she found him. He was right where she thought he'd be. Seeing the putrid shell of the spring trap suit, though, was not something she was prepared for. The rotting corpse of William Afton was disgusting. Damn. Scorched flesh fused into the fur lining. Hollow Chat, this is 100% like a Batman villain, a too. Like, where is Batman in all of this? Carbon and bloody Real iron. shit, Chat. No where is Batman? Bro. Creature that was once called this is given Batman villain origin type. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? This is a Afton Batman story, bro. The man Bruce. may not have been able to die, but he was about as close as you where could come. Where are you? His body would need a lot of reconstruction. Replacement arms and endoskeleton reinforcements were the top priority. Maybe pulled from their new line of glam rock animatronics. She'd have to see if they had any spare Bonnie parts lying around that they could steal. In the meantime, though, she threw the husk that was once her husband into a life support pod infused with aerosolized remnant to help keep him stable. But more important Bro, than recovering his body was recovering his mind. In his current state, he was comatose. An empty shell. Severe brain damage starts at temperatures over 108 degrees Fahrenheit. 42 degrees Celsius, and years of repeated fires had burned his brain to goo. Gone was the brilliant, frustrating mind that had drawn her to him in the first place. But she had a plan. Unlike her darling boy Gregory, Afton had found ways to record his consciousness. Fundamentally, the brain is only a series of electrical connections after all, so why couldn't you replicate that in the form of a standard circuit board? In essence, you could create a digital con- Chat bro, I'm so mad as well. Uh, Claire's a fucking genius too. Why was she doing all of this? Unless she has like a band of scientists working with her whose names are all Einstein. Like, how is she doing this? How is she coming up with these theories and these like solutions to things? William himself, the genius of all geniuses, couldn't think of. But not only is that, but she's a great businesswoman as well because she's doing this on a scale way larger than Michael could have. I mean, William could have ever done it in, like, <laughs> bro, she's irritating me, bro. Batman, bro, come on, bro. The bat signal's been up for 24 hours now, dude. Couldn't you replicate that in the form of a standard circuit board? In essence, you could create a digital consciousness. And one thing she knew about William, he was nothing if not cautious. A planner. Someone who had backup plans to his backup plans. And sure enough, there it was. Buried in piles of old animatronic CPUs, a record of Afton himself. But she needed someone to test it. Someone was definitely here during the night. It had to have been the client. I mean, they sent us that stuff in the first place with no explanation, told us to scan it, said it would expedite the process so we wouldn't need to program any pathfinding ourselves. Unlike the other games that she'd paid to have made in the past, this one had a different purpose. This wasn't about PR. It was about getting William back up and running, spreading his virus to the masses. You acknowledge that Fazbear Entertainment is not responsible for accidental digital consciousness transference. 
real-world manifestations of digital characters. She hired a new developer, Silver Parasol Games, to scan the boards and bring her husband into the system. And because of the immersive nature of VR, William's consciousness would be able to merge with the player, Whoa. giving him a new body, a new agency. There was just one That's crazy. The hold wasn't as powerful as she had hoped. He wasn't able to gain complete control. The first trial run, Jeremy, was so desperate to escape from his grasp that he sliced his own face off with a paper shredder. Messy. After is, that, is that the office reference, by the way? Like the comedy show? I feel like it is as she had hoped. He wasn't able to gain complete control. The first trial run, Jeremy, was so desperate to escape from his grasp that he sliced his own face off with a paper shredder. Damn! Messy, his followers were reluctant, to say the least. But it was the second attempt that looked like it had the potential to kill two birds with one stone. Enter Vanessa. Mrs. Afton wanted a surrogate daughter. Her darling Elizabeth would have been a young woman at this point if she had lived. And Clara wanted someone who wasn't Elizabeth but could be just like her. Could she have just rebuilt her like Gregory? Sure but she decided against it because she wanted an actual human mother-daughter connection well Bro, that, and it would be redundant and narratively unsatisfying it's really to getting to me that she's more family. psychotic she than say? any of the other of family members table for her to use and she was planning on using them all plus elizabeth had always been so loyal to daddy it was time to give her a second chance a true choice and vanessa seemed to be the perfect candidate to fill the role your dad's name was bill your dad didn't play fair did he he used to make your mom look bad in court he manipulated you i know your mom after she lost the custody case i was supposed to be a good girl she started as a QA tester at Silver Parasol Games, the VR game development company that was part of her plan to bring back william i'm not used to that line being said in that context that's thrown me off i don't know why that's killed me off like that man but we're jumping back in without any words or like games. The VR game gonna development move company that was part of her plan to bring back William. But more importantly, Vanessa checked all the correct boxes. Right age, blonde, green eyes with a fondness for flowers and the outdoors. In many ways, it was her daughter all over again. Except it wasn't just looks and personality. What really mattered was Vanessa's mind. Underconfident, coming from a broken home, motherless, able to be... Um, weak. yep, so she's vulnerable. She would do nicely. She would be the one to save dear old daddy, just as the real Elizabeth would have wanted. Wanted. I will make you proud, Daddy. While testing the VR game, William's digital consciousness merged with Vanessa. Oh, sure, she fought, fragmenting Afton's code into a series of tapes hidden across the game, trying to do web searches to regain control over her life, but it wasn't enough. She was weaker than Jeremy. She was a thrall that, despite well, she got a good self, though. had to obey. And with Vanessa, it was a two for one deal. She was getting a daughter back while also bringing her husband one step closer to reactivation. She just had to make sure that Vanessa was headed the right way. The reborn Gregory was an expert hacker, part of the benefits of being an Afton and a robot. So Clara had him keeping tabs on Vanessa, hacking into her emails and trailing her therapy sessions. Damn. To ensure the future Elizabeth was falling in line. If any of the therapists started to ask too many questions, they were promptly dismissed from their positions. And while Gregory kept tabs on <laughs> Vanessa's, like Claire is just like a super villain at this point, chat. He has animatronic, honey, bro. I was 12 minutes into this video and I still can't say the robot name or like you know, she has an army of robots. He's got money all over the gaff, bro. Like, bro, she is like she's a super villain, bro. Like, I don't even think this is a it's a story no longer for Batman, bro. We need Superman on the case. Chat, please tell me it gets better after this. Like, whoa. Does this just continue, bro? And so what what happens now? Once she brings her sick ass family back, what happens then? Personal life, Mrs. Afton made sure to clear a path for her. She needs to get gone. With silver parasols collapse at the hands of the anomaly, she then had the possessed Vanessa bring the contaminated circuit boards to DLZ shipping and the Fazbear Funtime service. More glitches, more remnant, more Afton. But it was her last move that was the best. In a true masterpiece of poetry, she brought Vanessa over to be chief security officer at the Pizza Plex. <laughs> a true family tradition to don the hat. Wow. And, and all it took was a recommendation. Oh, chief security. 
emails marked for deletion. Sure, Vanessa didn't have relevant experience for the job, but when it comes directly from the CEO, does it really matter? Husband, son, daughter. A corpse, a robot, a human. All that was left was Michael. Poor, troubled Michael. The boy that killed her youngest. The one that would spend years trying to make his guilty conscience right again. A self-professed protector. While she knew she needed him to complete the family, something told her that the problem had already solved itself. Something had... Yeah? When using Glamrock Freddy to excavate the buried pizza place. I have been here before. I found myself for the first time when I cleared the path. I have changed. My friends are here, but I can protect you. I am not me. Maybe it was the remnant that had coursed through Michael's veins. Maybe it was the spirit of Michael living on as a protector. But he was there, somewhere inside of Glamrock Freddy. It's crazy how pretty much gave Michael hell for killing his younger brother. Towards the end of the story, I'm on his side. I'm just stunned at how they managed to do that. Unforgivable, irredeemable shit. Yet, I'm rooting for Michael right now. I need him alive. I need my protector, bro. I need him to do some protecting because no Superman is coming. He's even got the superhero mask on and everything, bro. Like, he's ready as well. I could feel it. And just like that, she'd won. She'd done it. Sure, there were still some kinks to work out, some final brainwashing of Vanessa, some rehabilitation of William, but they were there. Finally, all together again under one roof, the Aftons reunited. A happy ending. And that's how it could have ended. That's how it should have ended. Had okay. it not been for a few unanticipated developments. For one, something was just wrong with the pizza plex. Almost as if the entire building was haunted, possessed. Puppet plushies hiding on ceilings, behind crates, places oh, that had no hell earthly way of belonging. No. Staff bots with greasy tears down their eyes, acting like they were being puppeteered by some sort of a nightmare. Even their sounds had the echo of nightmares long past. Okay. <laughs> Don't you ever do that to me without a warning. I will click off the video and I will end I will end my reaction here, bro. I can't believe they just did that with no, no warning whatsoever. That is absolutely ridiculous. Loki deserves a dislike. Unreal. Even their sounds had the echo of nightmares long past. <laughs> It was as though a guardian spirit of the Bro. past refused to move on. As long as her husband was around, it too would link. They move when you don't look at them in game. Fuck that. Only now, it wasn't just in one body, but it was in the essence of the building itself. She had seen stories of houses built on burial grounds getting possessed by angry spirits, but she'd never assumed that it could be real. Then again, in a world of living spirit metal and mind-controlling glitches, who was she to be so judgmental? Right. If the whole thing was ridiculous, why would this be the line that she refused to cross? After all, the Pizzaplex was built over the burial ground of angry spirits, but it was the power cords that finally convinced her that something was wrong. Suddenly, these cords were striped black and white like the security puppet from generations ago the very foundations of this place the materials oh, and wires that constituted it were rebelling against her against the aftons against the quest to bring them all together again and it was being helped by something else something slithering through the building maybe they were connected she couldn't be sure but a blob of living wires could be heard oozing through the walls stealing pieces and parts of the old animatronic man what the hell row. she could only assume that it was a byproduct of all the remnant they'd been collecting from afton's testing she knew that both light and dark remnant existed one of positive emotions and the other created from anguish anger agony perhaps this this Thing was an amalgamation of all the darkest parts of the pizzeria's history. Damn. A collection of the hatred still housed inside these Wait, defunct crazy. exosuits. As long as it was left alone, it seemed to be harmless. But if any Afton outside of Michael got too close, it would lash out wildly. Even young Gregory, looking to punish the family that had been complicit in its horrible creation. Little did she know, though, that Gregory should have been her biggest concern. That bringing the family together would have some unforeseen consequences. Gregory was normally the goodest of boys. She had literally built him that way but lately he'd been disappearing more and more often disobeying her orders <laughs> requests she knew that he loved playing on the arcade machines once the pizza plex okay. played, being so good as to top the leaderboard on practically all of them but lately he was nowhere to be found she suspected his absence had to do with glamrock freddy's failed performance the other night when he malfunctioned bro what <laughs> they're doing performances bro like 
<laughs> this has gone too far. They need to be stopped. Live on stage, almost as though the core programming of Freddy responded to seeing this rebuilt small boy, almost like it awakened something inside of him. She'd have to make sure that Vanessa was on the lookout for him, Ooh. but she'd soon come to learn that Vanessa wasn't enough. Whether it was the influence of the nightmare puppet or a reawakened hatred of animatronics seated deep in Gregory's code, something had caused him to rebel. To rip Gregory, Gregory, let's go, let's go. Rage against the machines! Rage against the machines! That's what I like to see, bro. Each animatronic in the pizza plex. Bit by bit, this boy was tearing down the empire that she'd so painstakingly built. Freeing Vanessa from her mind control, destroying the remains of Afton in the basement, setting Glamrock Freddy loose as her character Let's go, bro. crumbled around her one more time. She began to plot her revenge. She would have to bring them all to ruin. And there you have it, my friends, nearly a decade in the making, my FNAF timeline for where the franchise is here in 2023, the year of Fazbear Frights, by the way. As always, it wouldn't be right for me to finish without going over some of the more controversial. Um. Chat, what? That's the end? Chat, tell me they finished this. Chat, ch <laughs> tell me this isn't the end. That's that's where the story's up to now. Like we're not done. I need to see Claire get got. Claire needs to go. Claire is the worst out of all of them, and that was so unexpected. Oh hell no! Nah. So the, what? We just got bonus DLC footage here. What's he about to get into? I'm pissed that I just handed out. I think we can all agree that this part of the timeline was always going to be the hardest. So let me just break down some of the major points. First of all, the biggest swing, and obviously the one that everything else rests upon, Mrs. Afton being the CEO of Fazbear Entertainment LLC. Here's why I went with this route. Now, first and foremost, the head of Fazbear Entertainment is the single biggest mystery that we're meant to solve. At oh, okay, wait, is this all theory? Chat, is this theory? So it, it, it might not be clear. It could be... Like, we're guessing it's clear, like, based on some evidence we've got, but we don't know exactly if it is clear. Point in the lore. The ultimate guide brings it up repeatedly. So, chat, Claire might LLC. not be Here's the CEO, actually. Route. Now, first and foremost, the head of Fazbear Entertainment is the single biggest mystery that we're meant to solve at this point in the lore. The ultimate guide brings it up repeatedly. Who's okay. running the show? Who is okaying these decisions? And in the security breach memos, we get multiple mentions of someone manipulating things from the top down. Whoever this is, they are the person driving forward every other facet of late-stage FNAF lore here. They're the puppet master who's hiring the indie dev. They're the ones relaunching the brand, building the pizza plex over the... I mean, the only person I get why I came to the conclusion is Claire. Because that's the only viable person who would still go ahead with doing all of this, even though it would be a literal 180 of her character. It still is possible. Anybody else? Like, it would have to be someone outside of the story. Maybe a do you know what I mean? Like someone we have not been introduced to yet. And if you do that, it wouldn't be as compelling as if it was Claire. So I can see why you came to that conclusion. Burial ground. So everything at the end of the timeline relies on this one singular answer. Now, as I see it, there are two possibilities here. One, an adult robot Elizabeth, like we see older versions of robot kids in the fourth closet or mrs afton could it be someone completely new to the franchise absolutely yes but in a game with so many returning faces and repeated themes right pretty random and arbitrary mm -hmm. so between mm -hmm. these two girl bosses who then would it be well elizabeth always wants to please her daddy so she'd be most likely wanting to bring him to life but then what's vanessa's role in all of this vanessa is clearly meant to be a parallel for yeah. elizabeth same hair same so that wouldn't make sense backstories but if the main goal is getting the afton family back together which seems to clearly be the case in security breach then there's no need for vanessa to be involved at all we already have 
Elizabeth yeah. running the show. It would also mean that we suddenly have two robot kids running around, which feels narratively repetitive and quite frankly kind of dumb. Now look at Mrs. Afton. We know next to nothing about her outside of any clues that we can get from Immortal and the Restless and Laura's song. But what her being head of Fazbear does is make every other piece of the lore fit. Suddenly it's you can true. have one it of every is true. other type of character. One robot kid in Gregory, one brainwashed human in Elizabeth slash Vanessa, one OG corpse in William, and one possessed animatronic in Mike. Narratively, it makes everything else cleaner. Legally, it's also the option that makes the most sense. As I call out in my narrative, she'd likely have some stake in the original company and all of its assets. So as Fazbear folds as a company, I'd suspect a lot of it would return back to her. But there was one clue that really sold me on this particular direction, and that was this right here. In the post-it room, the big lore central of Security Breach, a dinner table scene with the whole family, including the mother. And not only is she there, she is at the head of that table. The position- True. Wait, he has a good point. This is my type of analyzing chat. This is my type of showering gun work. And not only is she there, she is at the head of that table. The position of highest lore central of security breach, a dinner table scene with the whole family, including the mother. And not only is she there, she is at the head of that table. The position of highest honor and responsibility. She is the one in charge with William being relegated off to the side. That one scene shows that we have to include mom in there somewhere. And the only place it makes sense for her to be is at the top. Now there is one big dilemma with my interpretation of all this. The ultimate guide really seems to point out that the head of Fazbear doesn't want the glitch trap virus to spread. They call out one particular email in FNAF AR where the legal team calls a cease and desist to all action about scanning the circuit boards. And even in FNAF VR, we're told that the circuit boards get stolen back by the client, presumably once they realize what danger is on there, trying to stop Glitch Trap before he spreads and gets out of hand. Here's the problem with that though, if the head of Fazbear doesn't want Afton to rise again, why'd they restart the company in the first place? Why'd they build over the FNAF 6 pizzeria? Why'd they go through an elaborate cover-up to make the possessed Vanessa an important part of the company? Just doesn't doesn't make a whole lot of sense. It would be the most inconsistent series of actions ever, but I did want to call attention to it since it seems to be the route that the official guide is trying to steer us towards. Moving on to minor point number one, the Five Nights at Freddy's games were made by the Rogue Indie developer. Here's the thing, FNAF VR opens with this line. That's why we have recreated many of these completely fictitious scenarios, lies that you've been fed over the last several years. Bro, that sound is so scary. I'm never playing the VR Fre I'm never playing a VR game, bro. You've got to be out of your fucking mind. It's recreating the lies told to you by the indie developer. And since Help Wanted has direct recreations of FNAFs 1 through 3, it means the games must be part of the fabrications that this developer made up. Also, all of this is heavily implied in the story of the same name, Help Wanted and Tales of the Pizzaplex, hence FNAF 1 through 3, canon games within the lore of the series. Big swing number two, the elephant, or ghost in the room, Charlie infecting the Pizzaplex. John from the channel FNAF has made some great findings about Charlie's in influence over the pizza plex the cables that looked like the stripe bro you niggas are talking about findings what are you what are you talking about is the author that intricate where he's left clues within source code and and things here and there like what i feel like the author of this show has not nearly gone as crazy with the theories and stuff that these guys have but is however clocking on to what they're saying he's literally watching all the youtube videos and being like hmm okay hmm so that's what they think okay cool so i'm a, i'm include that and then my, i'm gonna push the story this way you know what i'm saying bro <laughs> like he's going off the youtubers bro he's going off what they're thinking and he's like okay no that's a great idea actually i didn't even think about that hold up hmm so let me just and then, and then in the next whatever iteration or whatever, they'll be like, okay, cool. So they thought about this. I didn't even think about that. They thought about this. Cool. I'm going to confirm what they were thinking was true. So to carry on the theory, like, do you know what I mean?
He's a couple steps Mark, ahead, I can't lie. Puppet nightmare own plushies that you find hidden across the pizza plex in weird places. The staff bots with creepy smiles and in your dreams written on the front. All of these things scream puppets. Plus, with the puppet mask not having tears in the blob, seems to imply that Charlie's spirit exists elsewhere. She is still in bits. Plus, with the puppet mask not having tears in the blob, seems to imply that Charlie's spirit exists elsewhere. She is still in play, and she has an important role, especially in Gregory's post-it room. The doors to the post-it room in the game's code are called Charlie Doors. And inside, we see a bunch of lit up night. Bro, do you see what I'm saying, bro? They're getting assets from the game. Like, they're getting source codings from the game. Mayor staff bot heads. Suspicious to say the least. The channel ID Fantasy did a great theory looking at the post it notes, concluding that the crying child slash Gregory isn't alone in this room, but rather might be communicating with someone. A spirit, Charlie. Charlie's spirit seems to have pulled a poltergeist. Instead of controlling one thing, she's affecting a lot of little details, foundational mm. elements of the pizza plex. And this isn't the first time that we've seen this in the franchise either. We've seen spirits communicating with people through physical writing in the survival logbook. So we know that this is an established means of spirit communication within this franchise. And I suspect that to some extent it might be Charlie's influence making Gregory go haywire. Which brings me then to my final and probably biggest controversy in recent FNAF history, Gregory as Patient 46, the evil robot mastermind. Now, I know when I first came out with this theory a year ago, people were mad. But here's the thing, you don't have to take my evidence points for it anymore. The recent Tales from the Pizzaplex story, GGY, basically goes and just outright proves it. In GGY, we find out about a boy named Gregory Gregory, who's getting all the high scores in the Pizzaplex arcade machines. When therapists start to go missing, it's confirmed that GGY is the one that's working to bump them off. And when animatronics start getting corrupted by a mysterious glitch, GGY's letters are found inside the code. He even chooses the code name Dr. Rabbit for crying out loud. But obviously, by the time of security breach, Gregory is working against Burn Trap, Vanessa, and the animatronics. Why? How? Well, it's not really clear. Whoa, wait, this guy, like, to cause him to either this guy kind of proper is a proper detective. Detective, bro. <laughs> I legit thought everything he said was like solidified fact, but it's all really theory. And I should have known because the title was Game Theory. But that theory is like that whole timeline, like that. That to me is canon, bro. Like, there's no way he's not got this word for word, bar for bar correct. He has. That's canon to me, bro. I don't know if anybody else feels the same way, bro. Like, this shit's canon, bro. There's no way it's anything other than what it is now. His memory or be reset in some way. Maybe it was Charlie talking to him in his post-it room. Maybe he hit his head. Maybe it was the connection that he made with Mike on stage in Glamrock Freddy. Not exactly sure, and I don't think we have enough clues to solve any of it yet. But it makes sense from a story perspective why he'd start off evil on Afton's side and then switch to trying to destroy him and not knowing who he is in Security Breach. And with that, my friends, I'm wrapping this thing up. Congratulations, we are on page 40. 22,000 words of FNAF, baby. Pizza Plex short story. Have I answered everything? Should, should no. flip it and sell no. a book Does on it. Feel like the best and most cohesive narrative for all these characters that addresses most of the evidence we're given. Yeah, for me, honestly, it really does. And let's be honest with ourselves: the DLC will probably come out later this year and prove me completely wrong. I'm sure he's got like updated That's version of this, right? Because this is a couple years old, I think. And with that, my friends, we can finally rest. I can leave the demon to its demons with one final reminder that it was all just a theory, a game theory. Thanks for watching this was just in general was super o overwhelming for me bro like i literally as i speak feel brain cells recovering from the hour 26 minutes this was this was a little bit insane i'm not gonna lie and i should have believed you guys at the start where i said there's no way this can go deep it goes deep this goes deep this goes deeper than i ever thought it, it, it would I can see why so many people are invested in it because this is absolutely insane bro and this has made me just want to play the games even more and the fact that this is just a theory like we don't know if this is like this is canon to me I, i'll be real to me this is canon bro like i can't see the story being any other way the law being any other way where do i go from here you guys tell me man what video do i watch next do i play the game what do i do like uh, i'm invested now you guys got me invested bro what is next for me let me know in the comments down below that being said thank you guys if you stayed all the way to the end i appreciate you 
and make sure you drop a like and subscribe and yeah i'll see you guys in the next one peace